Hello and welcome to Casting Roles, a persistent D&D campaign played by a bunch of theater nerds. Thank you for joining us. If you're liking the show, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. And if you want to reach out to us, you can find us on social media. We're on Twitter at Casting Roles and on Facebook at Casting Roles ILM and very recently on TikTok. Um, although... That's good. It, it, it's, it's not set up yet. <laughs> Content coming uh, to Casting Roles ILM on TikTok. Um, we, our videos are uploaded on Friday on YouTube, uh, and occasionally we stream on Twitch at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays. Uh, but with no other announcements, we'll go ahead and start the part two of our season finale for season two. Uh, and we'll Let's right go. Let's <clears> go. <throat> So Ticket Takers, after, uh, it's only been about a week in Feldspar, uh, you have um, raided a wizard's sanctum, uh, captured important lost artifacts, uh, slaughtered and killed with the existence <laughs> of a shadow demon, many members of um, the Tidewater Syndicate, as well as the Scaled Fold, and disrupted their activities in this community. Um, with the final push to free Feldspar from their control, uh, you managed to drive out the Scaled Fold and then also the Tide Warders. However, um, discovering the final kind of traps laid of potentially a, a demon or devil takeover of town or something else, um, you exited from the stockade only to find the cloud, the what you assume is probably the profane citadel flying nearby and a shadow drooping out of it, or dropping out of it, of Azazel, the messenger of Araman himself, uh, traveling towards town. You <clears throat> had set up some um, preparations for the coming battle with this dragon, uh, and Marlo scouted off ahead to keep watch. And as Azazel approached, using their lightning javelin, which <clears throat> Hopefully, it's still attached to his hazel. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> might just be out in a field somewhere. <clears throat> might just be somewhere there. Yeah, uh, did a massive crit attack at the very beginning. Um, and then, with the help of Jury's uh, illusion deck, um, we managed to distract Azazel at the very start um, so that it did not get a massive attack round at the very beginning of its assault. Um, so, ticket takers, with that in mind, let me go ahead and switch over to our battle map and we will jump in at the top of the initiative count. <clears throat> oh, Christ. I, I still can't believe oh, it worked. my God. I still can't believe that illusion worked. It was awesome. It, yeah, he rolled a three so on cool. his perception, oh, which is that was pretty cool. rare. All right. <clears throat> so um, Azazel landed here, took out the uh, illusions. They're still there, but they're just kind of like arm, arm flailing guys at this point. <clears throat> <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, at the top, Marlo, you are probably a good 120 feet or so away from the battle because mm -hmm. you had gone away, but you are currently yeah. flying, I think. Um, I yes. Yes. So, what would you like to do? You're at the top of the uh, top. <clears throat> uh, uh, full action and movement, heading towards uh the the dragon. <clears throat> um, what's the full movement with the fly? I believe it is the same as the walking speed. Let me I think not li so. lie to you, but I <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that is. I think it gives you thirty there. feet of flying. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I'd like to go 60 towards the dragon. All right, so 60 feet towards the dragon um, probably gets you in to about here. <clears throat> How far away from the dragon is that? Um, 5, 10, 15, about 35, 40 feet away. <clears throat> That's your action and your dash. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I assume assume I would have had my lightning up and ready to go yes. when the dragon fight started, but I will take this time to werewolf out. Okay, so you go werewolf form, and now you all see a flying Marlow just like Super Saiyan in the air, and the werewolf form uh, pops out, and you are ready to jump into the fray on your next round. Um, all right, Kaimana, yeah. you are in the bubble. Um, you cannot leave the bubble, but is there anything you right. want to do while you're in there? Uh, no. Okay. Um, so you're maintaining, <laughs> you are maintaining the, um, the, the, the tiny hut, uh, which does be established because it, it does come from the snow globe, have slightly falling snow inside. 
Amazing. Um, all right, so that takes us to Azazel, who um, is a little perturbed by the um, the trick that was placed there. <laughs> um, and so he is going to kind of look around, let's see who he spies and what he sees. All right, so he does not pick up on much, um, but he does see the men on the wall with the ballast up. So he's going to fly up to this ballast here. <clears throat> And he's going to make a couple mm -hmm. attacks against the ballista. That's going to hit. And then with a tail swipe, that one will also hit. So he... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, 27 points. This one collapses down and breaks. Ooh. And the men who were guarding it um, run in all directions. Um, he does take a swipe at one as they pass by. And you watch as one of the town's members just gets flung off the side of the wall and collapses down 10 or 15 feet so out on, on the wall. And he lets out this roar um, and just says, this is my lair. You will leave this place, or you will die where you stand. And that is Azazel's turn. Um, and with that roar, you all who can see Azazel where he is, you do notice a large necklace on his neck um, that has four orbs on it. And he lets out this piercing roar, and all four orbs, the outer two, light up in a violet bright light color. And then the two inner ones begin to burn with this inner fire. And in four locations around the field, fissures open and you start to see magma begin to pour out of these fissures. As Azazel is trying to establish his lair here uh, in Feldspar. Um, let's see. Bolton is within 10 feet of that one. Abel, you're within 10 feet of that one. I need you to make dexterity saving throw, Abel. <clears throat> oh, sure, yeah. Natural 20 for Bolton, so he succeeds. <laughs> Damn Dang. it. Dang. Bolton did all the magma? What is that? Ace and I, what a, Ace what and I were an texting. Shame. Ace and I were texting. We were like, oh no, wouldn't it be such a shame if Bolton Coon bit the dust? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, 19. 19, so you save, so you take half damage as this geyser of lava shoots out of the fissure next to you. Uh, that's a low roll. So you take three points of fire damage as this lava kind of splashes in your direction. Uh, there is a barrel next to you. Let's see. Um, yes, so that barrel explodes. Oh, jeez. Um, and you take an additional two points of fire damage. <clears throat> Okay, okay. Um, and the archers next to you, let's see how they do. Okay, they take two points. All right, cool. Um, all right, so that is the layer action at count 20, uh, which takes us to Bolton. Uh, Bolton is going to charge forward, and you see him kind of, he's going to hop around the lava this way, and you see him kind of trying to get within range, and he just cannot quite get there, I don't think. I need him 30 feet. Oh no, Jesse can. Um, and you see him kind of shimmer for a moment and then Bolton's double appears up on the wall. Um, and <clears throat> at the same time, Bolton pulls out a crossbow and fires off and hit, you see the echo mirror that attack. So two is sat. Yes. That's those so are, cool. Um, That's so cool. Cool. One will hit, the other one misses, but that is oh, double ones on 2d6. But Never mind. That is still eight points no. of damage to Azazel, mm -hmm. so eight points of damage for Azazel. Um, choke, 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 choke. All right, which takes us to Source. Uh, I'm going to move down um, tree between me and the magma. Okay. 20, 20, other 20. side. Oh, this way. Other side. This no, way. other side of the tree. This way. 5, 10, 15, yeah. 20, 25. There's a ladder over here if you want to try to climb it. Um, I'll stay down on the ground because okay. I have a feeling he's not going to stay there forever. But it does get me within range for my pistol. Okay, so you'll have to do it as you're running because that close, um, the, the, the 10 foot wall would block your sight, but as you're running, you pull out your pistol and you fire at the dragon as you go. So go ahead and make your attack. First attack is an 18. Uh, that 
is exactly what you need to hit. <laughs> Jeez. Good. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, eighteen's armor class. Could be a lot worse, gang. Good. It could be. Um, that's quite eleven. To Nineteen. Yeah. Eleven points damage. Okay. And then my second shot. Yep. Oh, that's not going to hit. I rolled a seven. Uh, no, yeah. So the second shot um, pings off the outer armor and just glints to the side. <clears throat> All right. Anything else you want to do with your... Um, for my bonus round, mm -hmm. I'm going to activate my gauntlets of storm. Perfect. All right. So you uh, you activate the, the two gauntlets and they're now crackling with lightning ready to be used on your next round. All right. Which takes us to Anzel, who's going to charge forward this way and she lines up her holy symbol and she's going to fire off a guiding bolt in Zazel's direction uh, that just hits 18 to hit um, so that is nice roll Enzo uh, 11 points of damage from her guiding bolt and the next attack against Azazel has advantage Ooh. And then she's actually going to dive into the trench and kind of hide behind the archers over here because she needs to be in range <laughs> to do much more than that. Uh, all right. The archers, um, one group does not have a good shot at Azazel, but the other group does. So they're going to go ahead and pop off shots. And you just watch this stream of about five arrows fly up in his direction and just pelt against his outer skin and he just sh shakes and shrugs it off. Um, Abel. Okay. I want to first attempt a fairy fire okay. at Azazel. So you move out a little bit so you can get eyes on him. And it is what type of saving throw? It is a... Oh, I just had it up. I was reading... Fairy fire. Where are you? Oh god, I'm so sorry guys. Wait a minute. That's okay. <laughs> You're fine. I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Okay, it's a dex save, 15 dex save. Dex save, the one thing that he's not fantastic at. Um that is a twelve. Okay. Oh my god. So he is now illuminated in a bright fluorescent glow. Actually, so. you know what? He's going to use a legendary resistance. Oh, oh yeah. Fairy fire? Come yeah. on, man. Uh, yeah, advantage on all attacks. <laughs> um, so the yeah. the spell hits, and you see it start to go around him, and you see one of the orbs on his necklace shine bright violet, and for a moment the spell takes a uh, hold, but then this violet energy shoots out and goes around him, and you watch one of the orbs shatter. And so he only has mm. um, the other ones on his neck now. Uh, because okay, cool. he's not old enough to have his own letter legendary resistance. He had to get it from someone else. <clears throat> Who gave it to me? He took out okay. down for <laughs> yeah. um, I want to make my way, if I could, sort of near where Source is, but further back. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You can get behind this tree back here. Yeah, I don't want any more magma splashing. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be still in position. I want to take a shot at him with my force ballista. Okay, so you pop out for just a moment to take a shot. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, so it's a five. It's not going to hit. No, so you fire off, and just the, the sight of this massive creature there uh, shakes your aim a little I bit. I would have had advantage. It, I probably could have hit <laughs> It flies off into the distance. But using up legendary resistance is never a bad thing. Very good okay. thing. Um, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. All right, yep. Beaker's up next, and Beaker. he is going to pop out. He pops out for just a moment, and he spies the field in front of him. And he is going to give. It's going to say nope and leave. Mar, no, no, no. who he sees up here, Marlo, um, Abel, and Soros, who he can see. He's not going to put it on Bolton or Anzel because he does not know them. <laughs> this is valid. Soros, you now have. You are now blessed. Um, so you can add a d4 to a saving throw or to an attack roll. Cool. And that Easy lasts as long as, as Beaker can maintain concentration on that spell. All right. 
Um, jury. Okay, uh, where am I currently? Uh, you are My in the thing. tiny hut. All right, I want to go out and try to get 60 foot range on him. Okay, let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 55. Okay, so you have to step out about 10 feet from the, from the hut. And I'm going to cast third level shatter. Third, and that's a con nice. saving throw? Uh, it is a con saving throw, yes. He's good at those, but he can still Has take half damage. Has to beat a 16. Uh, that is a 19 save, but he still takes half damage. Takes half. Yeah. Oh, roll the damage. Uh, he takes, uh, seven is the half. Seven, nice. Two. All right. Um, let's yeah. see. Doesn't make any sense for him to do that. Um, mm. I'm gonna save my inspiration charges, and then how much movement do I have left? You have. Can I can I go back in the hut? You have. Uh, you had to come out about ten feet, so you you can go back in the hut. Yeah. Put me back in the hut, please. <laughs> 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 I am soft. Please put yes. me back in the hut. Uh, All right. Um, he is going to, at the end of Jurivin's turn, use a legendary action to shift movement to this no. space here and um, make a tail attack against this ballista. <clears throat> Natural 20. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, that's better on, better on a ballista than on you because that it's is. true. <clears throat> that is. 38 points of damage to the ballista. This one also collapses. How much HP do the ballistas have? Uh, they have about 25. They're quickly constructed, and he just needs to do enough damage to them so that they can't fire. Yeah. Which uh, one is the the one that we like hyped up? Um, I don't know. It's this one on it's this side of... over here where Abel is. Yeah, back, yeah. Okay. back right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And it it's is... only protected against fire damage, I yeah. think. But if he tries, you know, uh, he tries to destroy it with fire, that'd be a, a good protection for it. Uh, which does take us to the ballistas. They had armed in preparation for this because it does take two rounds for them to load and then fire, but they do get to fire this round and he is within sight of both of them. So um, Abel, can I make, can you make a um, D20 roll <coughs> add seven? Um, and uh, come on up, make a d20 roll and add seven. Add seven? Yes. Ooh, so 19. That'll hit. Roll 2d10 damage. 2d10, so I want to do it in d d So 25, that'll hit. Go ahead and roll 2d10 damage. It's 17 damage, nice. Mine's rolling. It's taking a long time. <laughs> Twelve damage. Nice. It's Twenty-nine points of damage from the two ballast uh, attacks. Um, so you watch as these two large bolts fire across and like slam into him, and he reels back in pain, but then just sh breaks the bolts off, and he now has these shattered pieces sticking into uh, various parts of his um, outer flank. All right, uh, Marlo, that takes it back up to you. Well, all right. Um, how how close could I get with my full movement here? Um, full movement of thirty feet. Let's oh, see. sorry, movement and action. Like, if okay. I move sixty feet towards him, how close will that put me? That because yeah, the right main boost gives you whatever your normal movement. You can get right. Oh, <laughs> sorry, that puts me right up on him. 25, 30, 30, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Yep, that gets you right there. Okay, so actually, I'd like to be within 20 feet of him. <laughs> and you still want to be flying up? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to go down in this fight unless someone knocks me down. Right. I'm a <laughs> flying little mosquito here. All right, so you are now 20 feet away from him there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have two options here. What is my better option? Ugh. I would like to try to blight curse of the finding him. Okay. Um, what is the saving throw? It's a 
DC 14 on the strength. Strength saving throw. <laughs> Which I'm sure he's really he bad at. He is strong. Um, yeah, plus six to the saving throw. That is an 18. Okay. Um, cool. I don't think anything happened. <laughs> <laughs> but you also watch as Mars' eyes shoot red for a moment, and this energy kind of tries to latch onto the dragon, and it just... <laughs> Chuckles a little bit. Has worked one time for me. I would like yeah. everyone to know. There's a <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm watching Mar as a werewolf like fly up into the sky and do all this shit, and I'm like, they're never gonna believe this part of the song. Jerry's <laughs> <laughs> um, just in the tiny hut writing the song. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, this is gonna be a hard sell. Okay. Right. Um. Then that's fine. Okay. That's, I mean, that's all, right, that's all that's I fucking are. got. All so. right, that is fine. Um, Kaimana from the tiny hut. Stare in horror. At what is <laughs> no. All right. Um, good. And as far as like, I don't, like the rule of tiny hut, you have to stay inside of it. There's nothing saying your hand can't come out of it. If you okay. wanted to cast a spell from a distance. All right, uh, I'm gonna step out. Just enough for okay. Your hand my, pops out. Yep. My hand pop out, and I'm going to cast Earthbind on him. Okay. What is the saving throw? Uh, strength 15. 15. Okay. This little tiny paw comes out. No. Um, <laughs> is that a one or a seven? Because it'll make a difference. Either way. <laughs> no, either way, it doesn't make a difference. But I think it was. <laughs> it's a seven, but that's still a 13. So what happens with, yes! the, with Earthbind? <laughs> he can't. He drops to the ground, right? He's no longer flying. How does that work? Yep. Okay. Uh, so your uh, is uh, flying speed is reduced to zero for the spell's duration. Any airborne creature affected by the spell descends at 60 feet per round safely until it reaches the ground or the spell ends. It lasts one minute. One minute. Okay, well, one that might minute. be the rest of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man, that's what I was trying to do, but that's way better. Uh, all right, so he... <laughs> Do I, I like think it's kind of honest. Paul just makes a middle finger as it comes out of the globe and then just like comes back yeah, in. <laughs> that's an insanely powerful ability. And he feels it begin to take hold. And the left yes. piece of his yeah. necklace um, yeah. flares uh, violet and this energy washes over him. And you see his wings stretch back out like they can work again. Uh, but that other piece shatters as he uses his resistance. No, this is, this is good. We got to get yeah. him to use it. Yeah, burn up. him, burn okay. him now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that would have been like knocking a dragon out of the air. That was a, that would have been fantastic for you all. That was a, <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys, that was, a second, that was a second level spell slot. I yeah. got like a couple more I can burn yeah, on this guy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, Just all keep right. coming. <laughs> so it is Azazel's go. Let's see if he gets his fire back. Uh, which he does not. Um, all right. I'm top off my drink real quick. So okay. he's going to. He senses who the javelin was, and so he's going to. Fly <laughs> oh, <up. no>. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize the smell. He's going to fly up to match you, uh, Marlo, and he's now flapping in front of you. Um, and he is going to. I'm make... trying to see if I want to uh, attack, uh, verbally attack a dragon. Right now. <laughs> All right, he's going to multi-attack against C3 attacks. Yeah. Uh, uh, bite and claws. Let's see. All right. Um, the first is a 25 to hit. The second uh -huh. is... Uh, that's two 16s. So that's also a 25 to hit. The second one is... The third. The last claw strike is only a... Let me just double check with the... Uh... That's only an 18. That's not going to hit. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, so the first two, the the first, the bite chomps down and connects with your shoulder. And then as you're kind of reeling back, he just uh, uppercuts you with the claw, sending you kind of cartwheeling through the air. Um, but then when he tries to so knock good. you back down with the other one, you uh, manage to kind of dot out of the way. Um, so okay. the bite and the claw hit. So that is... Let me grab my D10. Where's my D10? There's my D10. <laughs> uh, 14 points on the, the bite reduced to seven because mm -hmm. you are re reduced. And then the claw is 
Uh, also, 14 points reduced to 7 piercing. Um, so that's 14 total points of damage to you, Mar, mm -hmm. uh, from those two strikes. Um, and now Azazel is just there floating kind of even with you uh, and just kind of taking stock of the space around him, uh, which takes us to initiative count 20. Can I verbally uh, harass the dragon? Yeah, what are you I doing? decided to do. Yeah. I'm gonna go Hey, motherfucker, how'd the javelin feel? <laughs> uh, I like that back, by the way. Yeah. I, think, I think Mars anxiety manifests in aggression. <laughs> That's good. That's consistent. He yeah. chuckles a moment, and you just see swirling fi uh, smoke come out of his, uh, his nostrils as he's Good, focus shape. on me, bitch. Um, all right, <laughs> count 20. Uh, this rumbling sensation as the lava continues to spread a little bit from some of these things. Jesus. Um, and Jesus. those who can see, you see these entities flare oh, into no. existence out of the lava um, as two small little living flames burst out of the lava. All uh, right. Just two? Just two. Uh, this round. Um, oh, okay. That's and... <laughs> Uh, this one is going to move this direction, and it is going to pass through this barrel as it makes its way to Azazel. So the barrel explodes. Um, Azazel does not make her dexterity save, and neither do the archers. Um, so she takes... Ooh, that's about Azazel. Uh, that is eight. Not Azazel, Anzel. That is oh, okay. eight points of damage really to Anzel. <laughs> Uh, and to the archers. So you see uh, one of the archers collapses there. Um, and then it's going to make two attacks against Azazel. Uh, Anzel, the first one misses, but the second one hits. So that is another six points to Anzel. And she, you watch, anybody who can see, uh, Anzel bursts into flame as this creature oh touches it, uh, touches her. And so she is now on fire. Uh, all right, this other one is closest to Abel, so it's going to charge towards you, Abel, uh, and it's going to make two attacks against you. Uh, first one misses with a nine. Second one miss no, uh, 13. I think that misses you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it now. swipes out twice Hold in your direction, um, and you just kind of hold the shield, like it bounces off your shield uh, twice, but you now have this kind of small... Um, swirling flame in front of you, uh, Abel. Okay. All right. uh, Bolton. Um, cannot do much. So he's gonna kind of dance back a little bit and he and his echo are gonna fire off again. Two shots with their crossbow. I rolled the exact same number <laughs> on two different D20s, which just makes sense with the echo. That's so cute. Um, and they both hit. <laughs> so good job. Good job, buddy. So, oh, that's a nice roll, too. Um, 12 points of damage to Azazel from Bolton. All right. Uh, Josh, what, what yeah. kind of creature is the dragon? Is it just dragon? It's just a dragon. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, a large dragon. Not beast, just um, not dragon. a beast, dragon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, Saurus, that takes us to you. you uh, um, see, uh, Abel's being harassed by this fiery spirit over here, and then the dragon is up in the air. Um. Oh. So, oh, go ahead, um, Saurus. I was question. Fog cloud says that you can cast it on a point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can that point be the dragon's nose? Uh, it could, but it would not follow him. It would just be where he is right now. Um, so, but it would obscure his vision at this moment. Mm, no, I'm going to shoot him instead. Okay. All right. Go ahead and uh, <laughs> fire off your your two shots. Actually, I'd like to misty step onto his back. Cool. All right. Pulling one of the tethers. Less cool. Hate so that. You have now <laughs> two tethers. Yes. All right, and you appear on his back. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I will burn a key point to flurry of blows. Okay, and you're, so you're gonna make two regular attacks, and then oh, I thought the 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 pulling the str the thing was an action. Uh, bonus action. Okay, and then never mind. I'm not gonna spend the key point. Yep. 
I'm just going to uh, hit him. Okay, go ahead and make your two attacks. First attack is a natural 20. That, yes, that nice. definitely hits. Um, and that is going to be 2d6 plus 5. Plus, um, I'm going to use my Gauntlet of Storm on it. Okay. So that's 1d8 lightning, so that's 2d8 lightning. And uh, let's see. 19. 19 points of damage. Nice. Okay. And second attack is a two. <laughs> so that one misses. Uh, but the first one, you all, like Abel, you're the only one who sees this. You see for a moment, um, Soros kind of yank into the air and the shadow pulls and wraps around his fist. And you see it break into pieces and form into lightning around his fist as, mm -hmm. as Soros disappears. And then Marlo, you're there just in time to see Soros appear in the air above the dragon and then just come down with this smashing crack on its back. And it is en encircled by lightning from the first assault. Um, and then you miss on the second assault, Soros, because you're, you are trying to grab on and yes. the, the swing goes wild as you're grabbing onto the spikes on his back to hold on. Um, but that first attack was a massive attack against him. Awesome, so nice. awesome. Um, all right, well, uh, Neil, else? can I oh, go ahead. back up? Yeah. Um, when that living flame attacked me, can I use my reaction to Repulsion use shield? my shield of retribution? Yeah, what's the save on that? Um, the save. It's a strength save. Which he doesn't have a lot of. Uh, uh, no, that's a seven. 13. So he takes damage and is kicked back 15 feet. Yes. So let me, um, it's supposed to be 3d6 force damage and push 15 feet. And that'll be 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage to the flame. Okay. And let me mark that charge off. And it's out of your face. Out of my face. All right. Um, all right, good. Which takes us to Enzel, who is just going to make two strikes against the creature in front of her. Oh, that oh, doesn't cost Seriously, charge. a natural one and a five. No. Enzel. Um, oh, and they also... It's on fire, so that does make sense. <laughs> yeah, they also That's take... Crack. Oh, gosh, they take five points from the fire damage as well uh, at the start of their turn. Um, and then, well, I, there's not much else they can do. Uh, all right, the archers are going to fire off at the dragon. Um, oh, both of those are going to hit. Nice. Good job, nice. archers. Good job, archers. Um, for nine points of damage to the dragon from the archers. Uh, but they're getting a little scared. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's make some wisdom saving throws for them. Um, okay, you watch as soon as that happens, um, two of the archers here bolt and run that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then one from over here goes running that's, as well. That's fair. That's they fair. Did, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. They put as many hit points into it as they have. Yes, that's yeah. true. <laughs> uh, but they did not sign up for this shit. They did not. They were just like, we're here, we're going to try our best. Um, and they run away. Um, all right, Abel, Shoot you're Shoot twice up. and leave. Good luck. <laughs> we oh. also signed a contract where we did not sign up for this shit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we but are the ticket just... takers. The how many chances do you get to fight a dragon? It's all about maintaining that reputation. This is... <laughs> This is not a, um, not when we get that payout from Bolton Coon is what I'm gonna say there. Uh -uh. I was about to say, yeah. I'm gonna extort that. <laughs> this is an unprecedented marketing opportunity here. Ah, I did not read that properly. Oh, Bolton oh, no, Coon's Echo time. can fly. Oh, amazing. Okay, Sweet. so that's good, good to know for the next round. Yeah, just, just give me advantage, that. Bolton. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, which takes us to Abel. So you see a couple of the archers run past you. Um, and they just kind of like, good luck, um, as they go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to like chastise them. Like, go and find cover. Just, um, I think I'm going to, I'm juggling between two spells. What is the range on this one? Oh, no, that's way too. Okay, I got to do the other one. I'm going to first try to hit him with a 
Ray of Frost, I think. Okay, go ahead and roll your attack. Which is only a cantrip, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to Ray of Frost this guy. Uh, 14 plus 7 is a 21, that, that, right? That will hit. Um, so Ray of Frost is 2d8, which is 11 cold damage. 11 cold damage, nice. Plus another d8 for my arcane firearm, which is a Four cold damage, nice. so and his speed is reduced by ten feet. Okay, nice, um, good, and nice use of cold on the yes. fire-based creature. It, yeah, your I artificer's heart metal. is perfect. <laughs> I wanted to use heat metal and get that necklace off him, but I was like, he's got to be like fire resistant, if not immune to fire. Oh, so. that's why I'm not dropping fireball. This is my know. best spell, unfortunately. Um, all right, now I'm gonna. So bad to get that necklace away from him. And then um, what are you going to do on your bonus action, Abel? I'm going to try to force Ballista the guy. Wait. I'm going to hex him. Just okay. hex him. He is hex. And give him strength at... strength advantage on strength checks. Checks as his weakness. Perfect. Yeah. Which will help if Kaimana <laughs> decides to try to find him again. Um, all right. Which... At the end of your turn, Abel, he's going to use one of his legendary actions uh, to make a wing attack. Um, so Saurus and... Um, Saurus, this is a lot more for you in the sense of he's trying to shake you off. Uh, mm-hmm. But Saurus and Mar, I need you to make dexterity saving throws. <laughs> pretty and we get to add a d4 because of Beaker, right? Yes, both of you can add a d4 to that. Cool. Thank you, Beaker. Thanks, Beaker. We love you. 24. Uh, you're good. You'll take half damage and you are not mo- knocked off his back. Um, what is that? Uh, 21. Uh, you're good. You take half damage and you're not marked knocked prone, which is good. Oh, I'm so for- sorry. 22. Yeah, because if you had been knocked prone, Mar would have fallen out of the air. <laughs> um, oh, wow. That's a good I don't think. I don't think that's how it... Hold on. Prone, like, like, prone on flying just creatures, it just makes you fall for 60 feet per round. So if you hit the ground, it still would make you hit the ground. Unless it says it makes you immune to prone. Um, so, so that's 11 reduced to half. So that is uh, five points of uh, bludgeoning damage. So Mar, that's actually only two points of bludgeoning damage for you. But Sora is five points of bludgeoning damage uh, from the, okay. as like the wings kind of cr- like, raise up and like crush you between his <laughs> the two beating wings there um and he's going to use that action as a movement uh and he's gonna descend down and land on top of the hut uh and so <laughs> jury and kaimana you look up and there's just this this dragon now perched on top of the hut <laughs> Touch um, attack. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, he's on top. That can't be a pretty view. Yeah. Hi, Mana, I don't think he's supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to get out of Mars. Uh, Rank Mars, that is. I spell. am so fucking mad that this little whore keeps running away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Does she get an attack of opportunity? You do get an attack of opportunity because it is movement that took it out of your range. Nice. Get him, Mark. Get him. Um, 19. That hits. Oh, I've forgotten how to do everything. I'm panicking so bad. Uh-huh. Um, You're doing great. You're doing great. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Josh, do I have to use the? Could I say I use a different weapon? Could I use my dagger here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because pulling a weapon my... is free action, uh, as long as it's not like far yeah. away. I mean, it's then just you're a... grabbing your dagger and stabbing him. That's yep. a twenty to hit with the dagger. And it's the um, dagger of venom. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm really gonna. Nice. I'm really gonna try this here. He's got to make a con save. A con save, which he does have good con, but we'll see. I'm sure he does. Um, plus five to con saves. Uh, that is a twenty-four. I. <sighs> but he does take damage. Uh huh. Yeah, he does take damage. <laughs> he does take damage. Oh boy! Wow! Oh my god! Nine points of 
points of damage. Nine points uh, of damage, okay. Azazel, are you, is he down, Josh? Is he injured? How's he looking? Leg? There is a little bit of blood coming from where you just like <laughs> poked him between two of his scales. I'm fucking oh sticking a safety pin in there. No. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, I, that also has never worked for me. This is, none of these things ever work for me. The only thing I can fine. trust is my goddamn sword. <laughs> it's true. That's Mar Mar Maybe has a shirt. That dagger. That's kind of, that's kind uh, of hurtful. <laughs> all right, which is Beaker's go. Um, none of you look super hurt. Um, so Beaker's just going to maintain his composure. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, he manages to maintain his composure in the space. Uh, all right, Jordan. Uh, oh god, I don't have anything particularly good in this fight. Um, step out of the hut. Okay. Mar and Soros don't look too bad. Do you guys? How are you, how's your health? I've only lost five. Uh, I've lost uh, seven. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll wait. We'll wait a little bit longer. Okay. We'll wait. We know you're gonna lose more. We'll wait. <laughs> I'll I'll cast shatter. Uh, second level up at this fucker. Again. Okay, and you can up its ass. <laughs> you can um, space it in such a way that it's not going to hit Saurus. So you can hit his Beautiful. lower half as he's flying there. Okay, that's a con save. Indeed. Um, that, oh, that's only a fourteen. Ah, fail. Take full damage. Full damage. Oh well, please. Got nineteen. Nineteen points of damage. Nice. 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 Beautiful. Nicely done. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I'll cast, uh, I will cast Inspiration on, is Zell near me? Uh, and Zell is fighting the um, fire flame over there. She's she's on fire. I'll cast it on her. Okay. All right. Good. So Anzel has a D8 Inspiration die they can use on attacks. What? Saving throws. And I'll go back in the hut. All right, you're <laughs> Please, I, I did not even lift right, it. Up. <laughs> there you go. Up at the you dragon. Just, I'm just gonna be going in and out of this hut, Josh. You can, uh, you can just count on that. All right. I'm just reminded of the old strategy. game Trouble. Yes. <laughs> With the little pop thing in the middle. Yes. <laughs> like that. All right. Uh, the ballista's turn. They are going to reload, so they are now loaded for the next round. Um, good. Which takes us to Marlo. Jesus, can I get to this fucker, dude? You can, yep. Do I give her advantage since I'm on its back? Uh, yeah, we'll treat that as advantage. I would Tag like team. to finally fucking hit this dragon, yeah. please! <laughs> All right, go ahead. Ah, okay, oh, here we go. And I get advantage, yes? Uh, yes. All right, here we go. Um, I, what, I gotta hit an 18? Uh, that is its armor class. Yeah, I hit. Oof. Uh, hit. And hits. Okay. Nice. So. Uh, have my attacks, of course, they work. Um, where did my sword go? Hey, d d Beyond, where's my cool sword <laughs> that I always have equipped? And why would you unequip my cool sword? <laughs> it hates you. Uh, sorry, everybody. Um. Okay, there we go. Jesus. It, sorry, it considers my sword a bonus action because we had to like put it in D&D Beyond weird. Weird, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's mad at me um, and it hates me. Okay, so one, two, uh, three. One, two, three. All right, here we go. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Mm -mm. And then that's going to be close. Oh, okay. So. Thirty-five Ooh, points of damage. Thirty-five points of damage. Nice. That was not a good roll for me. No, <laughs> that was that not. Is... Was that a, not, main, a lot of lot of twos on those <laughs> dice, gang? Uh, all right. Um, it's not, and also, Josh. I I'm pretty sure. I just want to. It's not. This dude does not count as being from the Shadow Dale. Right? No, he does not. No. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Um, all right. Uh, with that, Mar, he is going to whip around mm -hmm. with his tail. Yeah, um, sure and use his oh, last. Oh, Josh, I'm so sorry. I accidentally rolled one of those as a D10. I'm gonna take away eight from that and re roll okay. that because that's not. Yeah, fair. go ahead. Yeah. Um. 
It was another two, like it was before. Okay, so, um, so keep that as thirty-five. Add six. Oh, it was uh, so it's no, the same. Yeah, okay, like, so it, it's the same. So okay, cool. it was the same roll. Cool. So. All right, that's good. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so he's gonna make a tail attack against you with his last legendary. Oh, that is a natural twenty. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Uh, let's see what is this. Tail? Yeah, that's, this is no, like. That's, yeah. yeah. No, I did. I did call him a motherfucker. You did. Did. And you, just, you, you did. And you just popped you him. Um, listen, listen. If, if, if anybody's going to take the hits, I'd rather be me. Yes. Where's yeah. my other? Yeah. This is, this is two heavyweights that. going at each other. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, so that is. Well, it's, so it's it's a natural 20, but you take half damage. So, mm-hmm. um, well, you have to die. So that is. Uh, 13 points of bludgeoning damage to Mark. Yeah. Oh, ow. No. <laughs> <laughs> As he swings around and clips you with the tail in the air. Um, all right. Come on up. Um, I would like to climb on Jerry's shoulders. Okay. What are you doing? Um, <laughs> I let you, but I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm going to take my... Uh, Staff of the Dragon Priest. Okay. Ooh. Because I can't reach the top of the uh, dome to cast a spell. Uh, and I'm going to shove it up through the dome and try to stab him with it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, because yeah. his his lower half is, he's kind of mounted right on top of there. Yep. It's a 23 to hit. <laughs> yep, that hits. All right. Oh, wrong die. Hang on, ignore that roll. Uh... So, all right, so yeah, so he takes one D6, so he takes three bludgeoning damage. Okay. And then he must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Um, that it was his wisdom plus, plus zero to wisdom. That is a uh, 15, no, 16, yeah. Okay, so he beats it. Yeah. So, he, okay, yeah. All right, that's all. All right, um, good, which takes us to Azazel. Let's see if he gets his flame back. I'll climb down back off of... Uh, all right, um, let's see. <laughs> okay, so he's gonna fly, keeping within your range, Marlo, he's gonna fly up this side of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's actually, let's say he's over here. I just don't want to move the thing. Um, no, and he's going to look down in your direction and you just see the yeah. seething heat begin to roil around oh, his mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you and Bolton both need to make dexterity saving throws. Okay. Bolton fails. Take that. Uh, 22. 20, okay, you succeed, you take half damage. Let me roll some. I don't have enough d6s, so this will take a couple rolls. Oh, that's not good. I mean, I do. I just <laughs> didn't want to take more out. Yeah, I, didn't like, I didn't like how you said that. Yeah. Um, I see y'all inside the dome and the thing, the uh, flame just shooting around you. Wait. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a cool Boy, thing. I'm glad we have this dome. <laughs> it's going to get rough for Heal Wolf out here again. Okay? Uh, so that is 37 points of fire damage as a Yikes. torrent of fire directly into your face. But um, it's half strength. Uh, fire damage is not? <laughs> no, but I, I succeeded. Oh, you succeeded. So, so have So yeah. 37 reduced to 13. 13. Um, and then, no, not 13. 13 and 13 is 26. Um, I tried. Eight, <laughs> 18. 18. 18 points mm-hmm. of fire damage. Uh, Bolton Coon mm. takes the full 37 points. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, boy. Um, so Bolton is, uh, in one fell swoop, Bolton is looking rough. rough. Um, you see him kind of drop to his knee and then just swirling fire around him. Um, and then he slowly rises back up, um, <laughs> but he is not looking in good shape. Can you po- point Bolton out? He's right Where's here. Him, okay. Yeah, so the, the fire blast like came down off of Mar and then just hit here. It did, um, it, this barrel of Quicksilver went up. Um, and so now there's just a puddle of Quicksilver that's spreading out around here. Um, and it is inflamed, so Bolton needs to make a saving throw against that. 
which he fails. Um, oh, and oh boy! <laughs> takes twelve additional points of poison damage from the inflamed, um, and he is considered poison. Oh. Oh, All right. <laughs> uh, right. That's gonna leave a mark. Yes. Um, well, I mean, if he starts rolling death saves while he's poisoned, those are a disadvantage, right? I, I think just attack rolls are a disadvantage. With I think it's ability checks. Is it all ability too? checks? Yeah, yeah, then it would be, yeah, because that's a const- that's a saving throw. Yep. Uh, all <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> which takes us to initiative count twenty. Um, the lava continues to spread oh out God. this way. <laughs> Um, and then over here, we get this spread, and this part's beginning to just kind of pool over here into a depression at the back side, uh, into a pool of lava there. Um, because they're gonna get cold. Can you stop? And um, another one of those creatures burps into flame here. Uh, all right, uh, the okay. one on Anzel's gonna make two attacks against Anzel, and I just threw a dice out of my thing. Um, it would put my legs back, please. That's thank gonna you. hit Anzel. So that is nine. It's called immersion. To Anzel. <laughs> no. uh, okay, that is 20. Okay, cool. And then this one's gonna move in on you, Abel. And Abel, it's gonna pass through you and then pop out on the other side. And while it does that, you feel this intense heat uh, and you suddenly find yourself a flame. Um, mm-hmm. You are currently in uh, on fire, uh, and then he's going to make two attacks against you. Uh, Talk about heartburn! Wow, I'm telling you. Two, two oh, actually, <laughs> the artificer ring, because I have the cold aspect, it says resistant to fire. Okay, so, so you'll just... take half damage on fire attacks, and you'll Ooh. actually take all half damage on all of us attacks from this creature because all of their attacks are fire attacks. Um, natural wow, one on the job. first one, that is a, a 18 on the second one to hit. 18? Do I want to shield it? Yeah, I'll shield. Okay, cool. So the shield, and so as it swings out the second time, you pull up your shield. Oh, wait, it missed the first one. one? It missed the first one, yeah. So can I use my, um... Yep. Shield of Retribution's ability? Yeah, you got your, you got your reaction back. back. Yep. Mm-hmm. That is what, to... what type of saving throw? Uh, oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. It was a natural one. Okay, so yeah, and then they take three d six. So he's kicked fifteen feet away from you. <laughs> this is just this creature charging at Abel and trying to punch him, and then just mm. getting thrown fifteen feet back now twice. Amazing. Oh my god, that's horrible. Punch it like a little football. Yeah, six points of force. Damage. Six points of force damage to the flame. Jesus. Okay. Um, this one, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, nope, cannot do that. Um, do they have a burrowing speed? Probably not. There's also a ballista that's flammable. Yeah. I was just seeing if, because some people argue that the flaming, the hut is just a hemisphere and not a circle. I watched I the video. Would... And it's actually a sphere. It is a um, sphere. The, okay. the head, the head honcho at D and D, he did an interview where he talked about it. All right, so he's gonna charge in on Bolton. Oh and God, no, Bolton! Bolton! Oh my God, a natural. Hey, I can't. Wait, wait. I. Oh, attack. okay. I was gonna say I can't do um I can't do my cutting words in the hut, can I? No. Okay. Yeah. That's Because no magic can pass through. Yeah, that's what the I. The second one okay. misses, but the first one was a natural twenty. Right. Uh, so yeah. Bolton takes another twelve points of fire damage and is on fire. <laughs> He's not having a good time. Yeah, no, Bolton. Bolton's no good. Very bad. Beaker may want to throw some healing on that yeah. boy. Which does uh, take us to Bolton. He is going to swap places with his Echo. To get out of. Oh gosh! Mm. Bolton, Dragon get, get down! Dome. Dragon down! Dragon down. <laughs> um, and, and Soros down with the dragon. Um, no, no. We're going to. Bolton's going to swap places with his Echo, uh, and he is going to take a healing potion with his nice. action. Where's Marlo? Uh, Marlo, where did you go? <laughs> Marlo fell into Marlo the disappeared into the, the, the void. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Bol- wow, Bolton, that's a great healing up of nine points with the healing spell. 
That's um, nine more than he has. That's nine more than he has. Where did Marlo go? Oh, there he is. Um, and then by the dragon back a little bit. Okay, that was his bonus action. Um, so he's going to, and he can also move the echo as part of his bonus action. So, um, he's going to make a crossbow strike from himself, and then he's going to make a sword attack from the echo. That's going to hit the crossbow. Two nineteens. That's awesome. Echo knights are roving, man. 13 points of damage. All right. Um, Why which... did he attack and heal in the same round? Oh, he can't, he can't attack. He could make his echo attack. That works. Yes, thank you. So I'll subtract. I'll just reroll that damage. Um, okay, so not 19, so only 8. Because he can make his echo attack as part of his bonus action. Yeah. Um, so I need to add back... Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Thank you for catching that round. Um, and then sorry guys, that's fine. Soros on the back. Same of, team. Fair is fair. Fair is actually fair. with that. Um, Azazel is going to use um, two of his legendary actions to make another wing attack. So I need uh, Marlo and Soros to make dexterity saving throws. This guy got beef with me. <laughs> I know. I can't even see Marlo though. Yeah, Thirty twenty. Oh, yeah, you fucked You're him good. up. You're good. You take half damage. Um, <laughs> um, uh, dirty 20 as well. Okay, good. So you take half damage, you're not marked prone. Uh, so that is, uh, that's, was that six plus five? No, six plus four, that's ten. Five points of damage to you, Saurus, and two points of you to Mar of bludgeoning damage. Um, and he's going to use that movement, Marlo can make an attack of opportunity, and he's going to land in crew. this lava pool here. Ooh. Oh, what a power move. I know. Respect. Um, yeah, 19 plus... Uh... Yep, that hits. Um, 14. 14 points of damage, nice. Okay, good. Uh, he's... You're, he's looking bloodied, like he is um, bleeding from multiple gashes. There's ballast or ballista um, things sticking out of him. Like um, you do notice as he's flying away, Marlo, the glint of a javelin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like he's looking bloody. What did, what did I get? Like up in his like belly, like kind of like smog style? Like kind of like right under the wing, um, like where oh. the wing joint is. So like every cool, time he like flaps, yeah, every time he flaps his wing, there's just like this pinprick of pain nice. from that. Um, all uh, right, so that was Bolton. Um, Saurus, <laughs> you are on his back uh, in a lava pool. <laughs> uh, I reach up and unclasp his necklace. Okay, uh, go ahead and make a... Nice. It is a heavy clasp. Go ahead and make a um, sleight of hand check just to see if you can... Or, or, or just a straight dexterity roll to see if you can dexterously do this while he's kind of moving and shaking around you. Nat 20. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. So, when it counts. <laughs> yes. So you um, kind of reach down, and even though he's trying to shake you off, um, you manage to work the mechanism, and the necklace unclasps and falls splat into the lava at his feet. Um, and all of you see for just a moment as Azazel shrinks down just a little bit. Not much. <laughs> But he shrinks down just a little bit as the boosting of that medallion is no longer present on his body. Nice. And then Ooh. I am going to spend a key point and flurry of blows. Okay, go ahead and make your two attacks. Uh, natural one and a natural seven. So, um... Class was it, boys? <laughs> yeah. So and no, 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 that was the, that was the, that was awesome. that, that was, was not twenty yeah. we needed. <laughs> um, that see. was a power move yeah. right there. And um, with the at the end of your turn, he you like you're so focused here that you don't sense the tail whipping around almost like a, a cow's tail to knock a gnat off of its back um, mm -hmm. as he's going to make a tail attack up in your direction with his long snake-like dragon tail. <laughs> um, and that is a plus. What's my plus on my tail attack? That is plus 
13 to hit. <laughs> um, so that is a 27 to hit with the tail. Uh, no. <laughs> that totally misses. Uh, all right, where are my d8s? There it is. Uh, sorts that is 20 points of bludgeoning damage as this tail smacks you. Um, I need you to just make a strength saving throw to see if that's going to knock you off of his back. Or okay, act, I'll, I'll let you also do it as uh, acrobatics because of your monk nature. Okay, I'm going to need to spend my blessed dice. And thank God it's a four. That's a 17. 17, yeah, that's what uh, you needed, uh, 15. Um, so it slams into you, and you start to fall off of him, and but you manage to kind of whip around and grab onto the edge of his wing and oh, hold man, man. and begin to pull yourself Yeah, because you are in the middle of a lava pool. Yeah. Um, to pull yourself up. Good, nice. All right, yeah. so that was Sources Go, and Zell is going to try to deal with this. And Zell takes four points of fire damage at the start of their turn. <laughs> And they're gonna make two attacks against this thing. Natural 20 on the second one. Um, that's a lot of natural 20s for me today, guys. Um, <laughs> 11. Still too did, did she hit both attacks? Yes, she did. Uh, okay. 14. And then the the natural 20 was the second attack. So that is, uh, that actually does it. Um, so you see like Anzel carve forward with their katana uh, like sword and the first strike, uh, the, the living flames kind of corporeal form begins to stutter. And then she just slams down with the second one and it vanishes into a puff of flame. Is she still on fire? She, yes, because then she hasn't used an action to put herself out yet. Um, all right, the archers going to fire off towards oh, we still have some you have so you still have three um no. natural one on the second attack but the first one does hit uh for an additional four points of damage to him too all right um and let's see if they maintain their composure all right with a flurry of that final shot um, you see the last of the archers bolt in uh, other oh directions. As they see, they're it's just fine. it's fine. Yeah, they're not they, able they to. They lasted three rounds. <laughs> they Good lasted order. three rounds. Yeah, they went through two two dragon breaths. Yes, That's, <laughs> <laughs> and lived. So yep. they they've done their part. All right. Um, I'm just a little upset they didn't run to the tiny hut. They didn't start their turn. Oh, yeah, they could Oh, God. Man. Imagine if they had ran to the tiny hut and then it was just like, let us in. Oh, let us in. <laughs> That's cloud car, tiny hut. <laughs> uh, all right, Abel, oh, that takes you to you with. Oh, um, cool. Yep. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. It's me. Um, I'm going to go. No, I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm not going to use any of my movement. It's going to keep swatting this fire guy away from me. Um, I'm going to try to uh, Ray of Frost again. Okay, go ahead and roll. Uh, plus seven to him. Let's see. Uh, 13. So that's what, 20, 20 to hit, right? That hits. Um... That's 2d8 cold. Oh, man. So 11 cold damage plus another d8. Rinse and repeat, people. Rinse and repeat. I'm glad someone's got cold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, plus 3 damage. Okay. His speed is reduced by 10. All right. Um, How long does that last? Uh, until, until the, the end start of, his, of my next Until the turn. start of your turn, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, and super helpful. Yep. Yeah. I am going to try and oh, and then he gets another D six from Hex. Oh, he does. Yeah. For necrotic damage, two points of necrotic damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna try to force Ballista the guy. All right. Go ahead and roll. Every bit helps. I'm just like chipping away at him. What does that even say? Abel's like kind of a powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all these little things I can stack up, but they, they have to actually hit. That's the problem. I just you, feel like your turn is always like, oh, and then I'm going to do this. Oh, and then <laughs> I'm going to actually do this. Yeah. Wait till he gets like two cannons. It's as I'm adjusting all my little mechanical things. I'm like, poof, like take a shot. <laughs> I gotta go. 
All right, so that's a 17 plus 7 to hit. So that, that hits, yep. Should hit. Um, <clears throat> let me find my Forest Ballista. Oof, so that's 13 points of force damage. All right. Plesh. Six. Additional six. And then, yep, and okay. then the hex again. I think One point of hex. Does the hex damage. only go off once around or is it on every attack? I don't know. That's a good question. I think I it's know. on every attack, but just double check for me and we'll move on. I think on it's said to... every time you do damage. Okay. Let me double check. Uh, you check and I'll move on to Beaker. Um, Beaker Ooh. is going to pop out for a moment and he's going to fire a healing word off in Bolton's direction. Uh, and Bolton heals up. Well, good roll, Beaker. Uh, oh, good job, Good Beaker. job, buddy. Good he job. Love he job. heals up good for job. another six points of healing. Good job, buddy. Yeah, uh, it says whenever you hit with an attack. So. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, all right, Jordan. Um, how bad does Bolton still look? Is he still fucked up? Um, I mean, he's singed and burnt. Um, but and he's still poisoned, right? And he's still poisoned, yeah. From the, the Quicksilver, yeah. Um, I think I'm gonna ignore him. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Power move. <laughs> well, I mean, I I have uh, higher He's level nasty. magics that need to be used on other things, right? Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so can I get in range to cast Thunder Wave on uh, Azazel uh, by like? So out the hut and go you that can, way. Yeah. Um, you'd have. Oh, that horse sport was supposed to push him five feet. I don't know if that pushes him out of the lava or not. Um, no, it would just push him kind of into the back of the lava pit. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So yeah, Sorry, you it's... can you can get to the. I mean, you can hit him. Um. It's just at like the edge of the lava pit, but it would still hit him. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'll pop out and I'll cast thunder wave on him. And that's a con save. Yep. Just first level. Uh, 16 plus. 16 plus, he passes. So he takes yeah, half. Yeah, 21. So he takes half damage. Yeah. <clears throat> and we rolled nine. Okay, nine points of damage total. Yes. So half to four. All right. Uh, Perfect. And I'll, uh, I'll cast, uh, I'll cast Bardic Inspiration on Bolton if he's close enough. Um, is it 60 feet range? Yeah. Uh, he's out of range of your party. Oh, who, who's in range for me? Um, Soros, um, uh, Mar, or Abel? I'll cast it on Mar. A good it, call. Give it to Mar. Yeah, Mar, you've got I'm a D8. Too. And Kaimana. No, <laughs> you're, you're, you're fine. All right. Yeah. Yep. What Mar is it Attack and saving throws? Is that? Uh, you yes. can add, yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. And then uh, if you would just, uh, and then I'm going back in. All right, you head back in. Um, technically within range of his tail. That's um, good, that's fine. So you, he swings out at you with a reaction. That is a 26 to hit. Yeah, that yeah. is so hard. <laughs> um, and so you take, uh, what's my plus on that damage? Eight plus eight, so. Uh, 21 points of bludgeoning damage. Oh my god, what the hell? Yeah, I'm staying in the hut. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you a little tap, and you're just like, okay, bye. <laughs> That's uh, not a little tap. No. <laughs> Have fun. Helps, helps you along your way. Helps you on your way back to the hut. <laughs> he, he hits me into it. <clears throat> yep. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, which is the... Squishy. Uh, the ballista. Um, let's see, come on, go ahead and roll another d20 and add six, and then... Um, Saurus, roll a d20 and add six. Twelve. Oh, uh, okay, that misses. So the first ballot fires off and misses. Natural 16 plus six, that 22. Hits. Go ahead and roll 2d10, Saurus. Nine. Nine points of damage, nice. All right, as the ballots to go. Marlo. Please. May I get in range? Yes. And hit the shit out of this dragon. Um, so you fly over um, to him. Let me. He's on the ground, right? 
Well, Marlo needs to fly because otherwise she can't get to him because he's in the pool. Um, right, so but he's standing in that pool lava. Oh, I, yeah. well, I don't want to deal with anybody on the ground. So, no, yeah. I'm So, Marlo, you, are, you fly up to his face there. Oh, I'm going to keep hitting him in the face. Like, the yes. snout is getting hit here. <laughs> I just want the fan art of Marlo and the dragon, like, clashing in midair. <laughs> yeah, it's so epic. <laughs> and advantage. And with advantage, yeah. Okay. And we're going to say, stop fucking running away from me! There's <laughs> <laughs> blood dripping out of his snout. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to use inspiration for this roll. Um, Let's go. D8, right? Yep, yep, D8. That gets me to an 18. Okay. Thank you, So first Therese. attack hits. Woo! Um... That will also hit. And then, yeah, 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 will also hit. Three nice. attacks. Yay. That's what I wanted. Okay. So. <sighs> As Marlo just bitch slaps a dragon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, epic dulcimer sound in the background. Does that inspire you? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> I got to double check my math on this. See if this is right. Uh oh, um. Okay, so that should be. Sorry, gang. Uh... Forty-six points of damage. Ooh, Forty-six. Nice. nice. <clears throat> um, oh and... wait, that's. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's actually wrong. I need to add a different number to that. So that was, <laughs> uh, uh, that's going to be. What did I say? Forty-six. Forty-six. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's fifty-two. Fifty-two. Nice. It's even more. I, I didn't add one of my. I like. I add. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, and um, there's just like this puff of anger and rage, but also Mar, looking at his face, you see fear for the first time. <laughs> uh, <Zazel's laughs> uh, all right, Kaimana. <clears throat> you said I can stick my paw out of the glass. You can, the yes. Dome to cast. Yep. Okay, right. Yep. And you said he's on the ground, right? He's standing in the pool of lava. All right, uh, I am going to cast Erupting Earth under him. Ooh. Uh, okay, and that is a what type of saving throw? That is a dexterity saving throw, uh, DC 15. Uh, 14. <clears throat> All right, so he's going to take 3d12 bludgeoning damage. Oof. Oh my god. And that 20-foot cube area underneath him, each 5 Put four portion is going to become difficult terrain, and it's going to take more than one minute to be cleared by hand. Yeah, and we'll just treat it. It's the bottom of this lava pool, um, mm -hmm. so it's kind of difficult in the sense that none of you are going to travel there. So I won't mark it, but we'll keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. Unless so... you guys plan to travel into the lava pool. <laughs> no, absolutely. Not intentionally. <laughs> That's not to say that it won't that's happen. That's not in the plan. <laughs> that's what. That's twenty-one points of damage. Twenty-one, nice. Get him, Kaiman. Keep it coming. Um, very nice. Um, and with that, like you notice, like he begins to breathe a little heavier, and he just kind of looks at you. <sighs> Become one with the flames, and he slowly descends into the pool of lava. Oh no. Soros, I need you to oh, no. Soros, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw to jump. Does he, <laughs> wait, Josh, does he when he's sinking and I'm in the air, does he get out of my melee range? Um yeah, technically. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it. Uh yes, that'll hit. Sixteen. Sixteen? Okay, you leap to the side and we'll say you land on top of the hut. Nice. <laughs> Superhero pose. Yep. Uh, <laughs> max damage, 14. 14 points, nice. Um, and then uh, he kind of, you watch as slowly the lava kind of rises around him and he descends 
for a moment. Yes, How deep good. is that lock? What did I just say? So <laughs> these fissures opened when he activated the the necklace, and yep. this was one of the larger ones. So it's probably like 15 or 20 feet deep, and he is crouching very, very low in it right now. Uh, you can kind of see his wings slowly rising up and just like the lava kind of rising up as he's breathing in this space. Um, he's feeling to it? initiative count totally 20. Um, initiative count 20. Um, the rumbling earth around you grows stronger, especially now that Azazel is in the flames. Everyone within 20 feet of any lava needs to make a dexterity saving throw. So that's Marlo, Soros, Abel, Azazel. Not Azazel, Anzel. Make dexterity saving throws. If that would help, then I'm in the air. Uh, no, because where he is, this geyser of, of lava shoots up and s mm, begins to splash I around. I, yeah. I see. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um. Dex save? Dexterity saving throw, yeah. Oh. 24. Uh, you're good, you'll take half damage. Half damage? 14 plus... Uh, 15? Um, that is a success, you take half damage. And 14. Okay, Soros, that is a failure. 15 is success, and Anzel also failed. Um, so that is with these- Let's have fire resistance. Wait, did Anzel but... want to use their inspiration? Oh, thank you. That might make a difference. Uh, yes, that takes them over the top. All right, cool. Um, did you use your D4, Soros? I already from, used it. From No, 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 blesses every time you have to make an attack. Oh, no, I did not use yeah. it. Yeah, bless does not until, go out until yeah, Beaker loses concentration. Until loses and then that's con. plus four to the to the fourteen. So then you so you also take half damage. Um, so all of you take half Beaker! damage. Beaker, um, let's go. So that oh, is bless is such a good spell, Jesus. So that is um, twenty three on the dice. So that is for half damage. That is um, 11. 11. eleven. Able, that nope. is five. Cool. Um, Anzel takes 11. Anzel, where are you at, Anzel? Oh, okay. She's close. Um, all right. Um, good. And at that point, this living flame is going to charge at you, Abel. This one's going to this come guy. up at you, Soros. <laughs> and another one pops up here with the eruption and it's gonna come up. A question, Josh. Yes. Since I landed on top of the hut, since could I go just pass through it? If you want to. Yeah. So you, you, okay, yeah, you you allow yourself to go through, so you pass that way. So these ones are actually just gonna both go towards you, Mar. Good, that's Welcome. what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now they, so you're up in its face. This one will get flanking. This one will not. Cool. All right. So does Soros take any of that molten damage? No, through? so Soros, you can remove that molten damage because you passed through the hut. Thank you, Ronnie. All right. Um, so Abel against you, that is um, 24 to hit and 21 to hit. The 24 hits. Are you going to shield again? I'm going to shield this one. Okay, so you shield the second one. So then you take um, 10 points of fire damage and you are on fire. Oh. Still. <laughs> um, oh, you were on fire last time I, and I forgot yeah, to roll damage yeah. for that. Those fire resistant. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, yeah. So reduce then, that by half. And then you also add another two because I forgot to roll your damage on your last round. Um, so five, seven? Seven total. Um, Marlo, against you, that's four attacks, two with advantage. <laughs> First one hits, that's a 25. Mm -hmm. Second one, that's a natural 20. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that is two natural 20s back to back. Um, oh and then the last attack will also hit. Um, I think I think it will. Uh, that's a twenty-one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so let me do these piece by piece because one of those is a natural twenty. Um, so the first hit mark is nine points of fire damage. Um, I 
I, I go down uh, and I don't. Marlo. Uh, Amalia's uh, locket will kick in. Okay. Um, Which oh my God. allows you to maintain concentration so you don't fall out of the sky. Mm. Um, right. Um, so I will. Um, go ahead and roll your hit points. This is going to do nothing for me. Uh, that's. Uh, 14. 14. Okay, so you're 14 up. The second one, which was the natural 20, um, that's a low roll on a natural 20. That is 10 points of fire damage. Okay. And then the second natural 20. Are you serious? I just rolled double ones. No. One. Doubled to 14. That makes it four. Well, yeah, that's what you need. <laughs> Good um, job. So you all watch as Marlo, uh, Marlo, roll a d20 for me, and you want to hide, you want a number above a 10. Okay. Don't do Yeah, that's a one. Point. No. Uh, Marlo falls and lands right at the edge of the, the lava pit. No. And okay, okay. Mar, that is one death saving throw from the fall. Oh, sure. Yep. Absolutely. All right. That um, second attack that missed Go, on me, can I use my, yes. can I use shield? Uh, can I use? No, because it's either shield, unless you're casting shield, uh, because either way it uses your reaction. So you can only make one reaction. So you either oh. cast shield or you use the shield to block him. Oh, okay. so it has to like be a natural miss. Yeah. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah, that's, gotcha. so that's, so they can either miss naturally or you can make the miss with shield, but those are the only two. Okay. Um, all right, so you all watch as Mar plummets out of the air. Uh, all right, oh God. That takes us to Bolton. Um, this is fine. He's, oh my, she's gonna it's move not... his echo here. Uh, and uh, he's not gonna swap places with it. And he's gonna make two attacks from the echo at this <laughs> creature. Hits, hits, nice, Bolton. All right. 13 points of damage to that flame. All right. Uh, and then, all right, that takes us to Soros. Uh, I run out, grab Mar, and drag her back into the hut. Okay, so Mar is 10, 15, 20, about 30 feet away from the hut, and there is a lava pool between her and the hut. Also, you probably want to leave her like slightly outside so I can jump out and heal her. Well, if I bring her inside the hut, you can heal her inside the hut. No, we can't cast in the hut. Yeah, you can. Yeah, we can. You can cast in the hut. You just can't cast from inside oh. the hut to outside the yep. hut. That's okay. Yes. yes. Right. So there is. Okay. Good. 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 She's thirty feet from the hut, and there's a lava pool between her and the hut. Throw her. No. I'm gonna jump with her. Uh, actually, um, I I run jump over the 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 flaming pit and get to her. Okay. I grab her and I veil tether inside. Uh, uh, you pull two tethers. Uh, okay. Um, and that gives me four. That I know that does four. something. Will you make it roll a d10 oh, for me, Soros? I don't like that. Oh, I don't like me. that. <laughs> Eight. Um, let me just double check my table. Oh, no. Yep. Okay, you're good. But on your turn, just remind me each time, Soros, that I need you to make you roll that d10. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, good. So you managed to teleport with Mar into the, the hut. Um, and now all of you are in the hut there. All right. That takes us to Anzel, who has been useless this entire fight. Um, yeah. She's going to run this direction and she's going to fire off a guiding bolt at the, the flame that you've been harassing, Soros. Not Soros, uh, Abel. Um, oh. That is going to hit. 10 points of damage. And the the flame next to you, Abel, now uh, any attacks against it will have advantage on the next the time it is attacked. Uh, archers are gone. Abel, you take four points of fire damage reduced to two at the start of your turn. Is that an action to put myself out? Yes. Is this magical fire? Uh, it's, I uh, know. <laughs> it's very practical of a flame elemental passed through your space and enveloped you in flame. Yeah, just like if I walk through the hut, would it just like, just magic can't pass through? No, it would not. That's all, I'm just curious. Yeah. 
Um, I'm nowhere near the hood. I was just curious. Uh, is it my turn or what? It is your go, yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, cast the Rhymes Binding Ice. Okay. Yeah. On our dude here. On <laughs> the one in front of me. Oh, okay, okay. And that is what kind of saving throw? It's a con save. Hold on, let me look around. It, it was a natural one. It doesn't matter. <sighs> nice. Yeah, how do I can't? I don't see anything else on the battlefield I could reach and it's like dragon guys. He's in the lava right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna do that, and he's going to take. 3d8, 18 plus a d8 plus 6 and I think that's all I can add to that. Describe how your spell vaporizes this living flame. Oh, at least it did. Yeah. So I shoot out the 30 foot cone of ice and as it like engulfs the space it just makes a ice sculpture in the shape of the flame. <laughs> just and it just <laughs> cracks and crumbles, and crumbles away to melt. Crumbles delightful. away and slowly melts away. Good. Uh, all right. Somehow your magic it. overpowering the elemental essence of the creature. Nice. All right. Can I move kind of like towards... Um, Lord, what is her name? I want to call her Azazel. Anzel. <laughs> Anzel. Anzel. As far as Dina I can. Mantel. Okay. Uh, there you go. Dina, here you go. And I saw the dragon sink into the thing, right? Yes. Can I try to just like force ballista into the pit of lava? Uh, you can roll at disadvantage. Okay, okay. Because you cannot see him. All right, all right. <clears throat> oh, Lord. Okay, so that would have been an 18, a 11 plus 7. Oh, okay, that's a six. Yeah, so you fire, and you're not sure if it makes contact, um, but you're just kind of blindly firing and hope that you're doing something to him. Yeah. Yep, and that's it. All oh. right. Um, Beaker is going to come over to you, Marlo. Oh, Beaker. And using their okay. last spell slot, is going to cast Cure Wounds on you. That is a 13. Um, so you regain 13 hit points and you come back up, Mar, from uh, being knocked out. Mm -hmm. Ah, fuck. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jury. Uh, Mar, how many hit points do you have still? <laughs> 13. Not a lot, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I will do the same thing and I'm also going to cast Cure Wounds on you. Okay, go, go ahead and roll healing. Um... It's, I think it's a third level with this one. Oh, wow. Because it's it's in the mandolin. I think it's actually a third level. I think level. it does cast a third level, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. So it it gives you this. Ooh, okay. You get 20 points back. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it was oh. pretty good. It was a pretty good one, honestly. Rolled well. And I'm like, Mar, you have to kick this dragon's ass. I can't do anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. I, I, and, I'm literally going to hug you and just thank you <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh, now I feel weird about us hugging. That's fine. Uh, and I'll I don't. Like, it's not like a hug. More say yes. I grab your shoulders and yes. manically look at you. <laughs> uh, I go. You got this, and I give you inspiration again. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Um, good. That takes the ballistas are reloading for this round. Uh, Marlo, that takes us to you. <laughs> Did we last round? I'm gonna. I'm going to. They fired last round when he was in the lava pool. I'm going gotcha. to run back towards where I saw the dragon, and I'm gonna turn around to where everybody in the hut is chilling, and I'm just gonna go. All right, let's kill the dragon, motherfuckers! And then I'm going to go use the wing boots, hover over the magma where I saw him go down, and start stabbing. Okay, go ahead and make. <laughs> Three attacks at disadvantage. That's fine. That's fine. You got it. Um, first Ronnie. one is Ronnie, no. going to be an 18 to hit. Oh, we lost Ronnie. 
18 right. hit hits. Go ahead and uh, that one hits. Okay. Um, second one is going to be uh, higher than that. Um, yeah, that's also hits. All right. I had to roll a nine or higher and I did that. Nice. So, um, okay. That's uh, a disadvantage? Yeah. No, that was a okay. disadvantage. Nice. Yeah. I, Sweet. Yeah. Mars is good at their job. Mm -hmm. I just really want to <laughs> really want this to be over. Okay, please good rolls. Please good rolls. Ah! Ten. Ten. Um, sorry, my brain is dead, so I do have to like pull out the calculator right now. You're fine. I, I can't do math. 41 points of damage. Nice. That will make a difference. All right. And then, did I use my full movement to do that? No. I would like to not hover over the back buddy. That's <laughs> nice. But still be in like, if he were to pop back up in the exact same spot, melee range. Okay. But so over you kind around. of fly, uh, out of the lava. Yeah, still flying, but um, not directly over the lava. And no, he's still he's still incapacitated. Not incapacitated, but he's still focused on something else right now. Uh, so he will not make an attack of opportunity. I don't here. like that. <laughs> he's healing. You he might be second. tunneling. Um, it kicked you out. Hold on, hold on one second. Or did you try to get back in? He's tunneling. Rejoin in a moment. It doesn't. Try it again. Hold oh on. Oh my god, Azazel kicked him out of the call. Oh no, Azazel's like, <laughs> get this, this artificer out of here. That's, that's what he's doing. He's hacking. <laughs> he's ruining the Wi Fi. Yeah, he's down there. He's, fucking, he's hacked like... into, he's taking over Sully's powers. Oh my god. Not Sully! Not Sully. We'll see if Ronnie can get back in really quick. Um, if not, we can we can like, take a little break because yeah, we do a break yeah. here. Um, we'll go ahead and take five minutes now, and then um, and then come back and finish up, and then try to wrap up. Is everyone good to like go to like a little later than nine thirty tonight to just try to yeah, wrap up we'll everything five. here tonight? Oh cool. yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, sweet. Yeah. All right, so we'll be back in five. All right, All right see you then. Huh? Thank, Thank you. Five. Thank you. Five.
Hmm. Hello, hello. 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 Rob, how's things going at the dub? Busy. Oh. Very, very busy. Really? Yeah, it's end of end of fiscal year and trying to get a lot of projects oh. done and things paid off. Oh, oh and, okay. And mm. we're in middle of exams, so uh, good times. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's an honest day's work, you know? Sully's staring at me like she wants some of this food so bad. You're eating the foods? Yeah. From last night. I'm, I'm dreaming of my food. We went to uh, Yosaki with Kevin Amanda. They had like a no baby day. It was so good. We ordered all the food. Mm-hmm. Those ribs, man. Those ribs. Those are really good. I'm so sorry. I'm actually gonna go immediately get food now that I've sat down. I will be oh, right, right back. You can start. You can <laughs> okay. start we can go start. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, welcome back from the break. Um, that takes us to Kaimana's go. You muted. So he's in the pick. All right. He's in the. Uh, he's in he's the, in the pit pit, right there. Yeah. <clears throat> I can see Soros, can't I? Uh, Soros is right next to you inside of the hut. All right, I'm casting a uh, healing word on Soros. All right. Soros gets eight hit points back. All right, Soros, you regain eight hit points. Thank, uh, thank you, I will take them. All right, which takes us to Azazel. And so all of you feel like the tumultuous earth around you beginning to become <laughs> even more so. And you watch as the lava pit begins to shudder and shake and boil. And then suddenly this bursting uh, form rises out of the, the pit. And it is the shape of Azazel, but he is now covered in lava and uh, is just this embodiment of fire. And he's he shoots out of the lava pit. Um, and Marlo, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Well, I'm gonna well. lean over to Soros and I'm gonna say, don't punch that. <laughs> no. Uh, hey, hey Josh, I don't like that. Yeah. I'm using inspiration. I uh, 18. Uh, 18 does succeed. You take... Um, six points of fire damage uh, as he blasts past you and um, you can make an attack of opportunity um, and then he's winging this direction um, as he's flapping his wings there's just sprays of lava that are flying beneath him um, and so Abel I need you to make a dexterity saving throw we can do that uh, 20 to hit dirty yeah that hits 18 plus something. I don't know. Dex is plus something. Yep. Plus uh, 12. 12. Damage. All right. And then Abel. Um, oh, those are high rolls, but you take a quarter of the damage. <laughs> um, five points of fire damage, Abel, to you um, with all of your resistances. Let's see if he gets his flame back. He does. Um, all right. And then um, the witch, he is going to. Uh, seeing the field and realizing that there are not a lot of options for targets he lands able on the wall right above you yep figure that much um and you see this roiling flame begin to build in his mouth as his mm -hmm. improved yep. fire breath what? um shoots out in this direction and it's 40 feet so let's see 5 10 15 20 that's gonna be anzel 5 10 25, 30, 35, 40, Marlowe, you are right outside of its effect. Um, so this, yeah. this burst of flame bursts out and it gets right to you and it just kind of like flares up right in your face, but <laughs> just the warmth of the singe. Um, so dexterity saving throw from Enzel and from Abel. 
Oh, okay. yes, sir. And Zell fails. Oh, no. Oh, another 18 plus. Nice. So you succeed. So you will take a quarter damage from this. Plus one. 18 plus one. 18. Oh, God. A quarter of damage from the improved fire breath. Because then Zell used her inspiration already, right? She, she rolled a natural one. Oh, no. Um. Oh, my. 56 points of damage. Oh, oh my god. Christ. Reduced for you, uh, able to 27, <sighs> reduced again to 13 points of damage. I am hurt. Fire damage. Oh my uh, god. As you watch as um, Enzel collapses. <gasps> no. no. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and then that's initiative count 20. Um, the flames only target is Marlo. Um, so they're gonna come down to you, Mar, and they're gonna give themselves flanking. Am I high enough off the ground that I can, like, not? <laughs> we can just, like, not do this? Yeah, they can, they can fly, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I just wanted to see. All right. <laughs> um, I just had hoped. So uh, it's a. Uh, the first one's not going to hit, even with advantage. The second one, that is a 19 to hit. No. That misses as well. So the first one completely whiffs. Second one, um, that is a 21 with advantage. Mm -hmm. And then um, 16 plus uh, 22. Yes. All right. So you take... Um, 12 points of fire damage, and you are on fire. Cool. All right. Uh, Bolton um, is going to run along the wall here, and he's going to attempt to attack Enzel from the side, make two swipes at him. Uh, that hits. Enzo. That hits as, uh, as Azel. That hits as well, uh, and Bolton does... 18 points of damage uh, but you see that um, when he hits this lava sprays back in his face and Bolton takes mm. 8 points of damage from that. Um, Josh? Yes. Am I not at the top of the round? Uh, so that was Mark, Haimana, Azazel, then count 20, then Bolton went. You'd, you had already gone because you had stabbed into the lava pool. Oh, that was right before. That was right before Azazel yeah. came out. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Because he had to go into his uh, Zelda second form. Yes, okay. the Zelda second form. Um, all right, uh, Source, that's you. Um. Uh, damn. There's two living flames assaulting Marlo right next, like right outside of the hut, and then uh, Azazel is about. Uh, I am for away. my action going to use wholeness of body to heal 21 points. All right, nice. nice. And then I am going to move out of the hut and give more flanking with one of the um, flame Perfect. guys, the one straight up. Okay, so you move to give more flanking there. Perfect. Yep. All right. Teamwork. Um, all right. And Zell, death saving throw. Yeah. Fails. That's one death save for Enzo. Um, Abel. Yeah. You have a dragon in your face. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'm going to try to do the right. Oh, sorry. At the start of your turn, I just for, I just forgot. Roll a constitution oh. saving throw. <laughs> oh, and Josh, you needed me to roll a die 10. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Please roll a d10, Source. You want seven, me to roll Seven, you're good. Okay. You want me did to roll a constant? my turn? Uh, I did not, because you... Mar stabbed at the pit, okay, and then you, you yeah, went, and, and you healed... Uh, you healed Source. Source. Yeah. Um, what was the d10? It was a seven, Source? Seven. You're good. All right, Abel. Um, roll a constitution saving throw, Abel. Okay. Uh, 13 plus something. Plus 5, 18. 
Okay, yeah, so you take half damage and then a quarter damage as just the heat radiating off of uh, of Azazel um, does four points of fire damage. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to get out of here. <laughs> I'm in single digits. Alright. Is, am I close enough where he'll get an opportunity attack if I try to run? Yes. Jeez Louise. So. Disengage and run. You can use disengage. I'm going give him disadvantage. Yep. That's an action, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll. But if you're low on health, I mean, disengaging, coming in back to the hut's not like a yeah. horrible idea. Yeah. I th- I'm dis- I'll disengage. Okay. Use my movement to fall back as close to the hut and to what's the lady's name? Uh, Enzel. Enzel, as I can. Okay. Does he have any movement? He left? he tried to hit. Uh, rolled a natural one on his disadvantage, oh, so he swipes out at you, and you dodge out of the way. All right. How much movement do I have left from that? Um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. You have five feet of movement. Can I'm asking? Can I try to take a shot at him with my force ballista? And no, I can't like grab her and pull her in the hut. Yeah, it'd be a, it would be an action to try to pull her. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. He's gonna try to shoot me, and I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to hit him with the force ballista. Okay, go ahead and roll. What's up, plus seven. Plus seven. Yep. Cool, 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 cool. I heard you say 18 from the other room, but it didn't come through on the <laughs> <laughs> the video. It's 18 plus seven. And... 2D. That is 15 damage. Okay. Plus another D8. Plus seven. Okay. Well, I took 22 so far. Plus hex damage. Because he's still hex. Oh, I should have roll. Should I roll another constitution to see if that hex stays up? Because. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Because you got hit by the fire. Like a couple of times. You got hit by the fire. Yeah, that's a four. So, yeah, so hex, hex is gone. Is so, yeah. Gone. All right. But yeah, so, okay. Okay. so okay. no hex damage. And so. when you fire and the, the bolt hits, it's almost like whatever form, physical form he had before is gone. And it's very similar to when you make impact to the fire elementals. Um, it hits and it makes the impact, but it's almost like it opens a hole in him and the flames just cl- close back around where the impact was. Cool. Um, am I five feet from the bubble? Yep. I'll just try to step in the bubble and All right, so Abel take a, inside the a respite. You look like shit. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I, I feel like shit. Um, <laughs> it's Beaker's go, but Beaker has no more spell slots. Um, so he's oh, just no. going to pat you on the back. Can he drag in Selen? Uh, he could, yeah. So let's see if he can maintain his composition. Beaker's if he can. So Beaker is going to roll out, and he'll make a strength check. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So he uses his movement to drag Anzel inside. Yes, nice. Beaker King the MVP Beaker for the win. Support, man. support. Awesome. <laughs> Our right. support crew's been doing a hell of a job. I, I have right. been, yes. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. All right, jury. Uh, I look at Kaimana and I'm like, so do you have like, um, are you healing or can you do more damage to the guy? I can do both, but I'm going to heal Anzel. All right. Uh, I step out of the, I step out of the bubble. Okay. I can, we keep calling it a bubble for some reason. <laughs> uh, but I like it. You know, we're going to continue to do it. It's bubble. Um, yeah. It gonna, looks like a snow globe, so you're fine. <laughs> I'm going to look at him and I'm going to cast fourth level shatter. Ooh, nice. Con save. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, which he fails with a 12. Oh my god. Woo! Okay, please roll good damage. Please, please, please. Come on, Jordan. Come on, I got 23 fucking damage okay. on this asshole. Jordan, uh, 
Describe the way in which your no! shatter rips, no uh, rips Azazel no apart. Way. Are yeah. you nice. Oh he God. had twenty hit points left because he would have he came out or he would have come out of his regeneration with a hundred hit points. Uh, but Marlo's interruption of that brought him down to 60, and you guys have whittled him away. He had 20 hit points left. Oh my yeah. nice. So Sweet! Nice. So you all, so you see Jiridin just like, okay, you're gonna heal on Zell, steps out into it. There's the huge loud sound of the shatter, and since he's all magma based, it's like the cracks all crackle across his body, and it's like the white hot uh lava underneath and then he he like shatters like stone yeah, and there's nice. just this spray of stone and lava almost like an erupting volcano and it sprays around the area there's a few bo- uh, uh you, there's a few explosive barrels that you guys have left around that that pff, go off um in that moment. uh bolton Making it even more epic <laughs> bolton will need to make a saving throw from that which he does um and actually just for flavor he sees this happen and you see him pop out and he switches places with his echo just at the right moment <laughs> nice. um, as part of that dexterity save that he made. Um, so Bolton does not take the damage from that. And you just see this flow, oh, no. flow of lava just f- fall around the space. Um, and now Feldspar's um, front entrance is <laughs> encased in this pool of lava area around all of you. Um, Duridin Dur- Dur- like, tur- Dur- Dur- like, well, uh, turns and looks at you all in the hut and is like, <laughs> um, also, so still clap, the two clap. flame things. Yeah, with his with his death, what? you watch as these two elemental entities mm-hmm. uh, lose mm-hmm. their attachment to the plane of existence, and they just <laughs> whiff out in a burst of flame uh, like because that. it was Azazel's magical essence that was holding them tethered to the material plane. That's why I was not even bothering with them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So also, I hate using like my only high level spell slot. So <laughs> it just so happened that. I I was like, yeah. you know, hey. fuck it. I'll use my fourth level. Great timing. So I, he- I heal. Um, what's they, their name? Uh, Enzo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you heal them up. Um, and they got seven hit points. Seven. That's more than they had. Jerry like looks at you all too and is like, maybe, maybe Feldspar wasn't so bad. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. Uh, I'm gonna go over and just, just, just like do a one arm tug on you and go, I, I know we don't do this, but I'm gonna do this right now because you just killed a fucking dragon. No. Uh, Jerry hugs you <laughs> so hard. All right, and, like, oh, we're doing this. you around. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can pick me up. This is so yeah, weird. Yeah, my strength is higher than yours. <laughs> I look at Bolton and go, and you wanted to arrest them. Why? <laughs> Uh, and I walk in the hut. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I will. I will leave the hut to the hut. The hu- the hut disappears. The falling and it's interesting. Like once you guys step out of the hut, the heat from the lava around you is it's not enough to do any kind of damage. But there's this area is definitely heating up. Uh, but you can kind of tell that the tremors of the earth are subsiding, uh, and any of the the flowing lava has ceased, and these are becoming stagnant pools. Given time, they will just solidify into a ring of obsidian around the entrance of Feldspar. Yeah. Tourist attraction. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes my idea for dragon scales and teeth and claws, though. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same yeah. Thing. yeah uh, Josh, how, how, how fucked is Feldspar? Like... Um, well, so thankfully, you guys took the battle to a place that was one of the few open areas. Uh, there's a few buildings on the outside of this little square uh, that are singed and damaged. There's some there's some small fires that are occurring, um, but it doesn't look like they're going to spread too much. Uh, your choice of battlefield was good for reducing collateral damage. Okay. Um... In fact, the the four Ballista guys who maintained through the whole fight, um, they're going to start, they rush over to one of the houses and they go to a nearby well and start like a, a brigade of passing water to try to put out some of these fires. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to help using um, 
control water. Okay, absolutely. So you pull water out of the well and you douse the flames on these. Oh, that's my. I also have control water. Marlo joins. And I will do that too. So it doesn't take long, and you guys are able to douse all of the fires. I mean, there's a couple of these buildings that will need to be rebuilt, um, but at least you've prevented any fire spread. Considering they got hit by a dragon, that's not bad. Yeah, they yeah. came out pretty good. good. Yeah. Um, can I go over and like help uh, Anzel up? Yeah, Anzel kind of sits up. <sighs> I could have gone better. Could have gone a lot worse. I suppose that's also true. Uh, I you think okay? I, I know you well enough now to know that that's a little odd for you to look on the bright side. I mean... You know, I thought it was pretty 50-50 that we were all going to die there, so the fact that we all didn't actually is making me very elated, right? Also, I'm just running off of adrenaline. I will um, crash in like an hour or yeah. so and be very... Bleh. But right now, I can't feel pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your HP currently? Um... Oh, you're right, Josh. Uh, let me drop Wolf Four. Real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I would have dropped Wolf Four in the battle. Yeah. The um, dragon died. Sure I, I sure. do need you to roll a D10 for me. Eight. Okay, you're good. Um, I can't fight anything else. So just... Can I? Uh, can I roll stealth really quick? Because I kind of want to get out of Bolton's sight for a second. Yeah, I mean he's back on the top of the wall. Oh no, he switched places. Okay. Uh, he is. Yeah, go ahead. He's kind of in an alley. Because I'm, I'm purposely trying to like get out of his view for a second. I rolled a thirteen, which is not. Okay, let's great. see how he does. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go off to the side a little bit. And I'm going to cast Sending. Okay. And I'm contacting uh, Iris. All right. And I'm like, uh, things went wrong. Um, Yorian, Fox Populi compromised. You may be in danger. Uh, got revealed going to Anderveer. Um, a moment passes, and then you hear um, her voice come through. Oh, and I wanted specifically to say uh, risk takers involved. Okay. I think I had enough to put that into. Um, Voice comes through. Rift also compromised. Damn. We've escaped with rogues. Okay. You can find us in the Oasis. Do you oh know where God. that is? Our narrative's okay. Oh, I'm so worried. Stay Do safe. I know? Oh. Uh, roll a history check for me, please. Okay. This will determine on like how many conversations you've sh- had with her. I got shaky hands from that response. No. Uh, I got a 19. 19. Um, so in you've been a part enough of the high-level conversations between the rogues and Vox Populi um, that they have revealed that there is a, a lost temple um, in the Wastes, which is a large desert region uh, that the rogues repurposed as their main headquarters. Um, and it's in the middle of the desert, far away from prying eyes. And that's it's called the Oasis. Mm. Um, okay. Josh. Yes. I just, I'm just asking here. I branded Yorian. What direction is he in right now? Um, so Yorian is currently still in the direction of Mystarial Springs. Damn, they really did just leave him there, though. <laughs> like, I, rem- yeah, I reminded Jace about that. I was like, do you, you got the Yorian compass still. And they were like, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna tell everybody that I'll be I'll be right back. Okay. After I've helped put out the fires, I'm gonna go try to find the mayor. Uh, okay. So you know that the mayor was like heading out of town uh, mm-hmm. with the rest of the townspeople. Um, at, they left about 10, 20 minutes or so before the fight started, so they haven't made it too far. But it's probably gonna take you about twenty five minutes to catch up with them or so if you move okay. at full speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the wind down of the battle, 
Is there anything that you would all like to do? Uh, that was my little bit, and I'm just going to be sullen and okay. moping around, so. I, uh, it looks like Jury fought a dragon and it should be really happy, but they're just moping around. Yeah. I'm going to drag Yuri to the Jury to the Springs. <laughs> okay. So you okay. Like Sorrow Springs. Yeah. Um, before you leave, Bolton um, just says, I have every intention to leave this godforsaken town at first light. Yorian comes with me, or I go with you, either way. Thank you, Ticket Takers. Your reward will be uh, delivered post haste to Nanavu. Is it? Is he still injured? Yo, he looks like shit. <laughs> uh, I cast. Uh, Bolton like has exactly six hit points. I cast healing word on him. <laughs> okay, how much does he heal it for? And Anzel has seven, so <laughs> they're. Uh, he heals for seven. I look at him. I cast healing word. Okay, good. Right. And I go show good faith and walk away. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. And he he and Anzel, unless somebody wants to talk to Anzel, he takes her with him um, to go recuperate at the springs. All right. Uh, anybody else wanting to do anything in the down, coming down off of the fight? I would like to know exactly where Yorian is in the <laughs> according to my direction. Okay, so you go with, you You kind of follow Anzel and um, Bolton and taking Jury mm -hmm. with you. Um, when you get yeah. to Mistar You go like my arm. And yeah. you're just, when like, you get boy. to Mistario Springs. I, um, I think I would have said something about like, yeah. All right, come on, champ. We're gonna go <laughs> clean off. Oh, whatever. And Jerry's just like, yeah, whatever. When you get to the springs, um, you find you can pinpoint the direction. It's behind Bolton's office. Okay, where's Bolton going? To his office. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but um, you've been in that room before, and you don't you don't remember any other doors being in there. But the direction of this is putting it like he's clearly somewhere beyond that space in the springs. Okay. Um, um I'm going to take Jury into one of the private hot spring rooms. Okay. <laughs> with me, and I'm gonna look at them, and I'm gonna say. Do you want your friend to go free? Look, Mar, uh, I did that whole thing and it was bad, mm -hmm. bad time. I can't ask you. I'm not, you. you're not asking me. I'm asking you. I, I almost don't know. I want him, I want him to be safe, but I don't know if I don't know where that is anymore. Mm -hmm. I think he's dangerous to himself too. So I don't know what to do. But well, uh it's up to you. If something were to happen to him here, it's going to make things more difficult for us. And I'd like to do this the right way. If we can manage that. All right. There's no right answer. It's just up to you. No, I want to do this the right way. There's corruption in things, but we're going to face that in Aaron Beer together. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Cool. I'm not going to bathe with you in private. <laughs> I don't want to bathe with you in private, particularly either. You're like my weird cousin. I don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. We haven't established that yet. We That's have, like, not weird what cousin we're doing. Vibe no, I, oh. we don't have weird cousin vibes. We do. Probably. Like, my aunt is like your kind of mom. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. I just, it's, um, no, I don't Doesn't like. Doesn't that make us weird, like, weird cousin kind of situation? <laughs> <sighs> Sailor Moon cousins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, 
you know, <coughs> it's not bathed privately in the hot spring. You'll you'll like energy. Amalia. I'm excited for you to meet Amalia. I don't even want to think about that yet. Let's uh let's go back. I haven't thought about Anterbeard. Cool. What's so oh, that, that's gonna oh let's fuck. Go. We're going to Anterbeard tomorrow morning. No, stop it. We're gonna go oh, get drunk in, in the in the hot springs now. Stop. <laughs> okay. Lots lots of drinks that's, to be had. That's what we do. All right. We'll go to the we'll go to the bar. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh um, no, we get shit based. Sora's able. <laughs> After the fight, do you just kind of head to the springs with everyone else, or do you? Uh, if there's anything else, any other location that I would be inclined to check out, I'm still very hurt. So yeah, I'm just gonna go back to the springs and rest up. Sorry. I invite you to come drinking with us. Uh, likewise. I asked Abel if he can have Anansi watch me. I'll, you can use Anansi as long as you need. Yeah. Um, and what I'm specifically worried about is because I use so many veils, yeah. something coming through. Oh. And, um, and at some point, I mean, just roll another d10 for me. Three. Three. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Kaimana. Mm. Um, so you catch up with the mayor and the crew. <laughs> hey, Kaimana! 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 <laughs> uh, you catch up with the mayor um, and they're kind of huddled um, in a like a, a forest area kind of off the, the main road. Um, and you see the, the townspeople there gathered around and the mayor um, sees you approaching. Um, I hope that you bring good news. Yes, the uh, the dragon was defeated. Oh, thank the gods, um, and thank you all for your work. Uh, is it safe to return now? Uh, yes, yes, it, sh it should be. Um, I, as you're the mayor of the town, I wanted you to uh, to have this to help. And Kaimana will give the. Uh, his entire coin purse over to uh, oh, the mayor. Buddy. So that will be 1,000 gold pieces, four silver, and 11 copper. Okay. Um, <laughs> the mayor. Um, <laughs> Mana. The mayor kind of says, well, um, this is un unnecessary. Uh, we had planned to, to give you all the ticket takers a. Um, a sum from our defense fund, um, but I appreciate the gesture. Um, perhaps for you, I can give um, something special from my family. Um, um, she reaches no. into a pouch and hands you a pouch. Uh, I, and I don't, she, you no, try I to don't. give it back to you and she refuses to take it. <laughs> you, we owe you much. Please allow me this gesture to you for your kindness and your work. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank you. You open it and look in it. There are like, it's weird. It's just 15 beans. Bag of beans. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. And then do you head back with them towards town as the, the citizens make their way? All yeah. Right. Um, the other ticket takers may take the reward. I do not want anything. Of, of course, I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and then they begin to make their way. Um, with an evening of downtime ahead of you, uh, recovering um, from wounds, drinking your uh, pains away. Yeah, sorts. Yeah. Uh, I will want to talk to the other rats at some point. OK, um, um. so. They... Oh, and specifically, we all tell Beaker thank you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. It is made yeah. sure, oh, Beaker, man. you are so right. good. Beaker has never drank before. Let's see how this goes. <gasps> is he drinking with us? Yes. Um, oh, God. Beaker. Him and Kaimana are going to end up in the We're bathtub Beaker together. Not, Beaker, these are called shots. And you <laughs> put them on the bar. And oh, you do. Um, thank you. Uh, you you got to take it really fast, Beaker. You drink them fast. fast. He kind of holds it up and then just shoots it. And um, with the 17 Ooh, constitution yeah. throw, uh, Beaker just drinks it and goes, well, that was disgusting. Beaker, <laughs> you're incredible. And I like slap him on the back really oh, hard. Oh, thank you. Um, it was an honor to fight with 
our um, our liege, our leader. I don't know the proper words for you, Soros. Friend. Our friend. Um, yes, um, the other rats are... Um, I, I, they will be returning with the townspeople hopefully soon. Um, and eventually the, the rats of Rylus do all arrive at Mr. Mm-hmm. Earl Springs. And so you can talk to them, sort of. Um, basically, to, to not make this drag out forever and ever, mm-hmm. um, I talk to them um, and say, okay, you're free now. Uh, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, we've got a place for you if you if you want one to base out of and to start learning about the world. Uh, there are a couple of options. We could send you to High Tower, and I can give you to the monks there. We could bring you back to Broadfield, and you could work at the Golden Ass Tavern, and as drovers around town and learn things. Um, and we could also use a couple of people who might be interested in crewing on the airship. Oh. Um... So you meet them all, and their names are Beaker, Mm -hmm. Alembic, Mortar, Pestle, and Crucible. Babies! So Mm -hmm. cute. Beaker, Uh, Beaker, Alembic, Alembic, Mortar. You see me starting to put all the shots on the counter. Pestle and Crucible. (laughs) Um, I thought there were six of them. did I say six? I only have five names written down. I might have said six and I meant five. Okay. I have five, yeah. Um, and there are five and none died. None died, yeah. <laughs> um, and they they kind of converse for a moment and um, Beaker, Beaker says, we would like to see the world with you. We would all you can be all happy crew on to the boat. crew on your ship. Rat crew, rat crew. <laughs> yeah. um, Beaker is and... a white rat, just like um, Saurus. Um, Alembic is gray. Uh, Mortar and Pestle are both black rats, and Crucible is brown. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, it's my intent that they learn to fly the ship from Kaimana, mm-hmm. so that uh... if we get in, into an encounter, <laughs> Kaimana does not get trapped at the wheel. Uh... Okay. And they all have um, the ability to gain, like Beaker leveled up in that fight. Um, They all have the ability to gain levels. They are all like level one in various different skills and abilities. Um, They're like companions? Yeah, so this is a crew of companions that you guys now have access to. That's pretty cool. I would like to take Beaker aside. Okay. Um, uh, Beaker. Yes, Kaimana. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> don't well, don't tell the others that. But you like, know, I'm making I I like I saw people do this once. You you know far more than we do. <laughs> so surely you can teach us something, and okay, then we can learn but, together on the rest. Yes, yes, okay, but just just know that like, um. We're going to, this is going to be a learning experience for all of us, but pretend like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, oh, um, a, a ruse. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, that, that's it. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like at the bar and I'm like, all right, parable and marble and Olympia. <laughs> like, you're, these are your first shots yeah. for Joy of the Crew. All right. Um, how else do you all want to spend your downtime and your presumably last night in Feldspar? Kaimana's gonna go. <laughs> Kaimana's gonna go around and uh, still help repair what little bits of the town he can okay. with so his you, few remaining spell slots. Right, you work into the evening, kind of helping restore or mold earth or, or, or repair things so that yeah. the city is a little bit more structured. A lot of repair work to the front walls that were damaged is needed. So yeah. Um, mm. Abel. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna hang out at the bar. I'm gonna give Jury her props for. I'm sorry, their, I'm sorry, their props <laughs> for uh, landing that awesome final blow. It was pretty cool. Yeah. And, I mean, it that was, was a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty impressive shatter, if I do say so myself. 
Um, I've never cast one that powerful, so. Dang, I thought I was pretty pretty great. Mm -hmm. Um, more importantly, so like the whole time you're like trying to have a conversation with Jury tonight, and he's like, "Hey, so like that, you know, when Yorin was like, i 'I'll see you later.' What do you think that meant when he said that? I would. It's not like. Do you think he hates me? I think he hates me. I think that means he's gonna make every effort to see you later. But like to stab me, and anytime oh, you try oh. to get the conversation to something else, a jury just keeps trying to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, Do you think that's... he like doesn't like? I feel like he wants to stab me. Oh. But like we're friends, but we're not friends anymore. And I'm the thing he hates. It was very, very bad. I mean, that kind of passion between two people. I guess it can not turn kind of sour, but I broke up with him. Yeah. <laughs> you can I broke go from stabbing each other to him. and he's really attractive. And I broke up with him. We've been broken yeah. up a whole year. I see him. So that means you held the power in the relationship. So, <laughs> but he didn't even know who I was. Of course, I did. I mean, like I didn't tell him that at all. That's kind of shitty. I don't know. Who it doesn't matter now. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, that's gonna be a tough one. That's uh, gonna be a. Well, whatever I, happens, yeah. you have the ticket takers to help you through it. Bro. I propose a toast <laughs> to the ticket takers. To the ticket takers. Thought you guys are just a bunch of a weirdo goofballs. Ends up you are, but we kind of kick ass while doing it. <laughs> I was gonna say those are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Ticket takers, dragon killers, defenders of justice. Ooh. I can't. I can't wait to hear this bard song. That... Oh, I don't write songs like that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. No, I don't write songs. <laughs> I just stare at you like dead eyed when you mention that. I don't write songs huh? unless it's about like freedom or something. Freedom. Well, we did free an entire city from a dragon's tyranny, so. We did from the tide water, so I guess I could write a song about uh, it. It's sure. been a long time. You should Josh, what's, what what's you this like? magic item bag of beans? I don't like playing music like that. Bag of beans. Yes. Wow. Okay. Bag of uh, beans. Bag you, just of beans. Gave, you just gave that to Kaimana, huh? Bag of beans. <laughs> <laughs> what does it do? There's oh, so it's, much chaos in its schedules. <laughs> oh, you, no. you throw a bean in and then you roll on a table to see what. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, the theme of this why? session, the theme of the magic item giving is like things that are useful for you and things that will cause utter chaos. Those are like, there's no, oh, there's no middle ground. <laughs> How was that a reward? I just oh, I just, uh, I just looked at the table. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Um, all right. Anything else you all are doing this evening? Going through. I particularly like number oh, 21 through 30. On. I'm going to roll. I got a 50 50 on what Mar does. Okay. Uh huh. I think I know what you're rolling for. Nope. Oh. Okay. Mar's going to go uh, get tipsy and then immediately go huddle up in the room and read books okay. because this has been too much interaction uh, with people. Are, are you reading any of the books that you and Abel rage looted? Yeah, I'll, I'll go through those because <clears throat> I haven't had any time to look at that. I uh, know. Yeah, so Marlo, as you're going through, um, there's several books that you specifically grabbed because they were interesting to things that you wanted to know about. Um, mm -hmm. the primals, uh, there's a book on the primals that really stands out to you initially. Um, oh. and you kind of set that aside to immediately begin reading it. Um, there's a advanced alchemy book called a deeper draught, uh, that you can see there's a lot of Ooh. things that might level up your abilities with alchemy, but will Ooh. require time and study. Okay. Um, there are, you know, there's random things on curses and, uh, lycanthropy that, that you plan to read and you're kind of creating a stack of like Mars drunken intellectual studies <laughs> session time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you come across one piece in particular and it is a book immediately that you see as something unexpected. It's a book written by Victor Rylas. I fucking drop the book. I throw it across the room. Yeah. Then I run over and pick it back yeah. up. It's called <laughs> Treatises on a New Wor New Order: Notes on the Formation of A Priori by Victor Rylas. Oh, the fuck! <laughs> and you flip to the first page, mm -hmm. 
and you maybe drop the book again. Because what you find here is a foreword written by a man who proclaims himself to be Victor Rylas's best friend and one of his greatest allies, Damien Corday. Do you want to read it, Mark? I would love to read it. Okay. Oh, Go ahead. God. Okay. Um, do you want me to read it out loud for what you sent me? Yeah, sure. If you okay, I'll read it out and loud. Damien Corday was the Opry Ori founder. Damien Corday was Iris Corday's father, yes. and yes. he co-founded A Priori with Victor Rylas. Yes. Ooh. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. And also founded Vox Populi. Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I I was I asked about this and then was like, oh no, I actually have to pull this up. That's okay. Um, ha, 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 ha. Where was I yelling at you about this? I, know oh, I was yelling you at know, you. It was... <laughs> like in all caps, I was screaming at you about this. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I'll send the PDF to everybody once Mar reads it. But um, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Again. That's okay. <laughs> You're I'm looking so hard for it. Oh, okay. This is when I'm in all caps at you. So this has got to be it somewhere. Rob, I like how your face is cut off right now. <laughs> He's just oh, right sorry. Under the eyes. Yeah, it's just <laughs> a... I was okay, just like, you look okay, very okay. serious. I was reading um, the bag of bean chart yeah, and appreciating. It's not, there's nothing in there that I want. Kind okay. of yeah. Yeah. While Marlo's pulling it up, Abel, okay, at, any point, Abel at any point, do you go through your books? Yeah. yeah um, sure. So you discover many books that you were interested in reading. Um, there is Jerry will Jerry will follow you and be chatting yeah. about magic with you while you read. So for your books, able pretty much you were able to find things that were interesting to what you wanted to find. Uh, there's a book written by Praetor Yakuzi of the Orula Lyceum of Noavia, who is your trainer. That's my teacher. It's called the Ooh. Impending Power. Advancements in Magical Techniques with the Application of Zephyrosite. Um, there is A Journeyman's Guide to Gem Cutting, uh, a book on the Free Cities. It's a Free Cities Traveler's Guide by Pella Brand of the Violet Cloister, the Free Cities being the floating cloud cities. Um, as well as, yeah, those are kind of... Oh, and in a book called In the Realm of Chaos by Persephone Mistweaver, um, which is, this is a book that you and Mar both like found a there were two copies of it and you found both and it's a detailed explanation of the um, primals um and their origins uh which at a later session if you want to go into more detail about that i did send you the opening chapter of that um so we can you can look at that in more detail uh but you also discover a a book which when you open to the first page you immediately like this magical essence hits your brain and you realize that this is a book of knowledge and you Ooh. stop because if you spend time reading it now you know that you have a time limit on how long you have to study the material within but you've seen a have heard of a book like this before and it's something that can boost your intelligence score by plus two but you have to spend a certain Ooh. amount of time reading it over the course of um i think it's five days or something like that Ooh. And once you read it, it all the writing disappears, disappears. for a hundred years. Yeah. Um, at, before we get into Marlowe's thing as well, the mayor does show up at some point <laughs> and approaches Jared and, and and with a chest and places it in front of you and says, as a gift from the town to the Tiki Takers, this is from our defense fund. Um, it is 2,500 gold. How much? 2,500. <laughs> 2,500 gold. I, uh, I'm like, hold on one second. And I look down at Kaimana and I'm like, do we take gold from people? I'm not there. Oh yeah, I'm I look who's- Kaimana, eventually you do return, but I think you probably went off and who, did something Who is else, here yeah. still? Source and Abel? I like pull yeah. you both Kaimana's together. Being a little, Kaimana's being a little mopey right now. Yeah, oh. I pull you both together oh. and I go, what, a, do we take gold from people? I don't work, I mean like I, what? Well, the logistics of an adventuring guild, we would need funding to continue our operations. So, from a business sense, it would make sense. But all right, we'll, uh, we'll take... why don't we take just part of it? It is from the crown. Um, we get it. They will some... take. From the crown. <laughs> <laughs> they say no more. We I'll we take. get a sum of um, defense funds each year, um, and so this is a portion of that. How much will it cost to rebuild your ballistas? 
Oh, um, we. This is not the full defense fund. We should be able to rebuild the ballistas that were damaged in the fight. Okay. Then I will take a hundred gold out of it, and we're like an investment in the city. Uh, thank you. And she. I like that. that. Yeah. All right. My lord. But we'll take the rest of it. All right. I don't know how much that was. How much did you say? 20? <laughs> 2,400 20, gold to the ticket takers. All right. Nice. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, Treaties on a New Order, uh, addressed to Victor Rylus, Archon of Mysteries, and Master of the Weave. Preface. It is with great trepidation and an overbearing love of country that I write these words. The world as we know it is not prepared for the realities of our current age. The orders and systems of Illyria are still reliant on the supposition of a world ordered and maintained by our living gods. Once pillars of power and might, blessing and guidance which drifted and led our people to fruits and fortunes, those gods are long dead. The threats they once fought to protect that protect us against, however, are as close as the very front gates of our weakly fortified realm. While Bellinor's great work, the Taurus and Nor, and the sacrifice of the other seven of their own essence have held those terrors of the Vale at bay, the struggle at the seams is ever encroaching. An inch gained a decade, but now an inch nonetheless. One does not need to travel far around the perimeter of our golden realm to see the horrors of small burned villages, the death of our civilians, and the bedraggled soldiers tasked with protecting us all from the present horrors we would like to imagine are far past. Mm. For that purpose, and out of the great mother of necessity, this text proposes a new order, one that cannot be imagined or described from the actions of things that have been, but one deduced from what will be necessary for our future survival, a priori, if you will. The people of Illyria deserve an order which will guide and protect them from the schisms and fractures of a world without the gods, but it also deserves protection from the horrors outside the realm which seek their very demise. Our current leaders do not seek to protect the people, instead guiding them in the continuation of an order bathed in a fading light. The past is gone, and while it should be mourned and honored, and the spirit of that time upheld, the present requires a might the Curia Regis and the Crown are ill-prepared to commit. A priori would then gather the brightest and boldest of leaders around the world, uh, realm, those willing to fight back and take the actions necessary to guard against an eternal night. It would de-establish uh, de long-held systems, dismantle the rising tide of inequity and equality, and drive resources to permanent solutions against their greatest enemies. Without this movement, our world will not last. The borders are tested daily, and it will not be long before the strength of Taurus and Or are put to the full assault of the veil. It is only with forethought and preparation that we may stem the coming tide. We must stand prepared. My dear friend and explorer of the worlds beyond provides here an explanation of the defenses that are necessary. If Belinor will not awake to defend us, if the dragons remain in slumber, then it is our destiny to rise up and replace their old order. We may be mortal, but we are met me. We are the children of the gods. Signed, Damien Corday, Guildmaster of the Curia Regis. Ooh. Fucking hell. Yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot to process. Hey, yeah. what does that sound yeah. like, gang? Hey, does that sound like anybody's mission statement? <laughs> hey, does that sound like anybody, any group we're already very familiar with? That's their <laughs> mission <laughs> statement? <laughs> it's pretty deep. All right. <laughs> um, as the night wears on, anybody else doing anything before you take your slumber? Um... um yeah, Kaimon is gonna like um, just kind of spend a lot of time by himself. Uh, he's gonna try to find like any like a nearby tree or something like that and kind of meditate for a little bit. Um, so within mm -hmm. the the Mysterial Springs, that like open air um, park space within does have a few beautiful like ma like beautiful red leafed maple trees that you could easily kind of climb up and hammock in. Yeah, Kaimana's going to do that. Okay. Do any of us notice Kaimana being... Uh, roll up a check, source. I'm drunk. And Kaimana, if you wanted to be stealthy, you can roll a stealth check. No, he's not. He's okay. not doing that. Um, perception, that is a 16. Uh, yeah, Soros, there's a point where you're kind of looking around and you see just like the... It's the light glowing... 
objects on Kaimana's staff that catch your eye, mm -hmm. like the two tide bonds swirling essences. Um, and you see them kind of in a tree not far from the bar. Uh, I walk over, look up. Are you okay? He doesn't answer for a bit, and uh, after a little bit, he's like, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, is all. Anything I can help with? Mm. No. And I will leave you to it. And I leave. So the night eventually, the revelries of post-battle, the swarming ourselves with books, the um, relaxing thoughtfully in a tree, uh, eventually take you all to a slumber. Um, are there any plans other than getting on an airship and leaving Feldspar for Anavir for you? No, we have to go back to... to um... yeah. For expedience, yeah. if there's any other plans other than that, for expedience's sake, I was just going to say the next morning you do. Josh. Yeah. My javelin go in the magma. <laughs> oh. No, no. <laughs> that yeah. was that. I mean, yeah. I probably lost it, yeah. Yeah, I went in with the magma. No, 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 no. I got a nat 20 on a dragon with yeah. it. <laughs> I'm good. I'm yeah. fine. Also, if I can ask yes. Abel something really quick yeah, before cool. we go. I feel sure. like we're drunkenly hanging out. I'm like, Abel. The man in the bag. We're gonna have a problem with that in Anarvir. I don't think we can take it to a populated city that's not one inhabited by enemies. Oh, it's inhabited by enemies, but I don't think the man, the the, the weird little guy, should be killing them yes. randomly. It's not the same as here in Feldspar, where our enemies abound. Um. I feel awkward about the entire thing, but the whole man and the, the whole situation with him. Mm. We should figure out what we're going to do about that. Throw him back in the veil? <laughs> Am I in the same room? Uh, I mean, you... if you're, I think this is like Jerry's this room. Song. Big room. Are you hanging Are you... out with me in my room, Abel? Didn't we all have you... one room? You, Jerry, you had, I mean, Jerry's big room. Jerry is um, my yeah. room. Yeah. So and if, I think me and Abel have his books like spread out. Yeah, like, yeah. I fucking pop out. I'm laying there with my legs up in the air. I did not know I was there. And I go, we can get, we can ask the Archmage. We can ask the Archmage if she, if she knows anything. We, we gotta exercise. We gotta get that the fucker out. We gotta exercise it. <laughs> we can, yeah, we can ask. I, yeah. Um, Isn't she like really hot? Well, oh my no. God, dude. She's so fucking hot. Hell yeah. Let's <laughs> go. Oh. Like, Oh the archmage. Let's go talk to the archmage. I've got a plan. I got an I, I, agenda for us. I've never had agenda before, <laughs> but we got one for interview. That sounds <laughs> so threatening. I love it. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so That's the, it. But the next morning you all decide yep. you go, okay. So with the, the sense of expediency and not in saving you time, um, you all gather in the morning, um, eat a, a breakfast, and with Bolton and Yorian and Enzo, uh, make your way back to Eldritch Peaks and retrieve the something ticket this way comes. Um, and I begin missed our ship. And begin to head off towards Anervir. And we'll close with this image. So um, the trip is about eight hours or so. And in that time, Kaimana is working with Beaker and Alembic and Mortar and Pestle and Crucible to um, <laughs> learn the ins and outs of the, the ship. Um, <laughs> Voice the thing, <laughs> turn the whatchamacallit. <laughs> Abel's um, helping them, because yeah. he would know a little bit about airships. Yeah. His father helped to design them. You, you discover in Crucible somebody who has very quick study of mechanical pieces. Um, and you managed to walk through him the basics of maintenance of Zephyrsite and uh, Zephyrsite engines. Um, and so that kind of goes, uh, Alembic takes very quick uh, learn to the wheel and is able to kind of learn with Kaimana on the, the flying and the, the transfer of the wheel. Um, and then Beaker, Mortar, and Pestle are managing the sails and the, the various, the wings and things to keep it uh, on course. Um, but about eight hours or so pass, and um, 
from or probably yeah a little longer than that about 10 hours or so past um and you are all sailing above uh the clouds and it's just a endless expanse of blue sky but then the sun begins to set in the distance and it goes fiery red um and the clouds below you are this pillowing pink and red and purple and as it sails above the clouds it's um the landscape below you, the air whipping around you, and there's a sense of freedom of leaving behind the dangers and threats of Feldspar. Um, and for once, you kind of are all able to take a deep breath as you know that the current worries are, are kind of past um, and whatever future problems haven't yet taken hold. And so there's a space now of quiet. Um, and finally, after the hours of feeling almost there, uh, Bolton finally looks over uh, to Alembic and says, you can take it down now. We're getting close. Um, and slowly the ship begins to descend. And you pass for a moment into the sea of clouds and there's the coolness of the breeze and, um, and the, the heat of the sun is replaced immediately with this current of mist that washes you over almost as if it's a stillness and an eerie, eerie, eerie quietness that is washing away the problems that you faced in the past. But then the something ticket way, this way comes, breaks through the bottom cloud layer in a swirl of vapor. And for all of you that have never seen it before, and even Jury who's seen it has only ever been on the streets. Mm -hmm. The sweeping massive expanse of Anervir lies below you. It's hard not to imagine the history of this space, uh, the once most sacred spot of the Nine Gods where they sang the rest of Illyria into existence. The site of the final battle of the subversion where the seven gods sacrificed their very essence to cage their maddened brethren and then where Belenor raised all of the earth around lifting the continent high above the others to envelop the stranger's cage in its deepest stones and then raised the city of anervir as an everlasting defense in that very spot even in this overcast sky with the clouds above you the white 40 foot tall marble walls all one solid piece of stone encircle uh, the city of light, and immediately, matched in radiant brilliance, you see the center of Anervir, and of Illyria as a whole, the massive Temple of the Eight, its central dome tower flanked by eight towers of varying heights. A beam of radiant energy swirls from the center of the tower, piercing up into the sky and into the clouds, casting a golden warm glow over the center of the city. From it, the streets, a mess of organized chaos, stretch out in both long, large thoroughfares and smaller winding side streets. You see the nine districts of the city demarcated in places by tonal shifts in structure or smaller walls, um, and it's laid out in various purposes and forms, reminiscent of the god who brought them into being. From the iron forgeries and massive worksman halls of the Iron Mount, to the fortified structure of Asterion's Rise, to the Palace Hill, a massive chalk-faced cliff rising high above the city at the back of the outer reaches of the Moonville, stretching as a green expanse behind it. Slowly the ship descends towards the waiting aerodrome. Welcome, at last, ticket takers to Anervir. And that's where we'll end season two. Yay! Woo. We're flying in. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Oh my God. Um, so just as, as a heads up for all of you, um, aside from like things that Bolton Coon will need you to do, um, you are a week out from the King's birthday. Um, and so, you can consider this a week of downtime. Now, Jury probably has things that they want to show you around town because this is their home, home turf. Um, but you can also think about things in a week of time that you would like to accomplish or do uh, for your character and their advancement. Um, you know that there's a, a hint of things like um, of what the celebrations are gonna entail and Marlo knows a little bit more details about those types of things. So may have plans for getting clothing for balls or regalia or oh, things no. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um, Mars worst yeah. nightmare. Yes. yes. But before our next session, think if there's anything uh, that your character would like to do, we'll kind of do like a Tales of Bossing Say style uh, couple no. session or two. Um, so it can be like individual things that you would like to do in a capital at capital city and um explorations that your character can go on or things that your character wants to achieve in a place where there's almost not endless opportunities or endless resources but far more resources than you've been used to uh having available at, your, at your fingertips Nibble's dead is in uh, the Nibble's mayor dead. did the mayor did not tell kaimana what the bees were did they they nope. did not 
Okay. And Kaimana has not had them um, um, appraised by Abel yet, so Kaimana okay. doesn't know. Yeah. Or Drury. <laughs> or hey, Drury. Can they, uh, and they can ask me about, like, during the flight, if y'all want to know a little bit about, like, the parts of the city I frequent. Yeah. So I, I would have told you. Yeah, anybody where... who's interested, you can assume that, like, if you had any questions about the city or things that you might be able to find in the city, Drury was a resource, so you would have that knowledge if you asked. So if you want to think about planning yeah. stuff. Yep. Cool. Yeah. But we will pick up yeah, how will... season three in interview. Yeah, go ahead, Abe. Or how long will it take to craft him? Um, I'll ask you. Yeah, that can be oh. something that we, yeah. And if oh, you have yeah. any questions, you can send me um, and we can talk through that. Um, and then if I have a sense of what you all want to accomplish in the city, and it can also be flyby. Like we can, in the next session, you can be like, oh, I wanted to do this because we have... It's seven days. Um, I just so, wanted to replace yeah. Marlo's spear or javelin. I feel bad. She yeah. also javelin. Oh, oh, you no, gotta... I don't. no, 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 no. I want you to do something else if you want to do something. I don't think it'll take that. Also, I, I can just uh, make like I, I me and my dad talk about this. Yep. And Josh, we can all talk yep. about this. Mm -hmm. I want some kind of illusion sheath for my god sword because Ooh, we are yeah. back in the town. <laughs> <laughs> I got it so late, <laughs> you, you also have some rat amulets to craft. So a lot of things. Well, no. Yeah. So um, the rats were the dispelled. The, yeah, they, the oh, they were dispelled. Them, oh, now, and Soros has his. Yeah. So the rats' yeah, amulets fantastic. were dispelled. Yeah. Oh, even better. Okay. Yep. Great. Do, 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 do they need the proof against scrying? One is like I've got, or are they good? Uh, I mean, that would be a a bonus um, in the sense of like that would prevent them from being scried upon, but they don't get like the free scry that the amulet was yeah. providing them. Yeah. So yeah, it's up you to could, you whether you want that extra layer of protection or not. Mm -hmm. It'd be great if we could. Uh, I don't know if, if Abel has time to build enough on course of this flight or whether he's got other things he needs to do. Yeah. At some point, Bolton Ooh, does put on his glasses, Abel, and he talks to you on the, sh the ship ride. And he does say to you, like, you know you're being watched, right? Who's this says that? Bolton. Bolton. Being because lost. Bolton's uh, glasses are true sight glasses, so he sees the orb that occasionally seems to be following you. Yeah. I uh, was made aware of that when we rescued the mayor. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's not a uh, um, an enemy that right. is watching. Yeah. I hope but... for all of our sakes. All right. But, I have a pretty good idea who it is, though. So. But we will pick up in Anarvir with... In Anarvir, yes! Hopefully no fighting, but definitely political intrigue and court politics. Oh, that is some drama. Game of Thrones. I'm on sight with you, Seth, my yeah. dudes. Uh, <laughs> do we milestone level? Uh, or... And with that, yes, you do. <gasps> hit level eight. Wow, yes! Hit so, eight? Yeah, so if you are planning on continuing multi-classing or doing anything... Uh, that's an ASI for most people, or a Ooh, feat okay. for most people. Um, so if that's the case for you, and oh, you want to talk. Can we... um, Soros and I talked about a custom feat that we would be happy to um, bring into the game. Um, I'm willing to use this as a custom feat, that in addition to like ASI feat, you could take another attunement slot. Mm. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if that's something that's interesting, like if you don't want to do ASI or feet, you could put you could take another attunement slot, and I'll just treat it as like you get a feat that gives you an extra attunement slot. That's a good idea, but I don't. I, I get more attunement slots later yeah. on in my. But I know so that's something that Soros wanted. So that's pretty that's cool. Something. That's yeah. a good idea, All right. Rob. But you guys can roll your hit points and prepare well, your character for level eight. Yep. Old old one e d and a d and d. There were no limits, and so you'd end up with you know. 10, oh, 15 wow. things over the course of 20 levels. Yeah, I can't um, imagine. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. the economy of action that's in 5e ner was balanced by nerfing yeah. the number of things you could carry. Yeah, that's like so. what makes even like a dragon, which is super dangerous. When you have enough action economy, it really mitigates their strength um, with the current system. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, whatever happened to the giant floating cloud that was following? Uh, you guys all watched it disappear off into the distance, uh, heading loosely in the direction of High Tower, but not quite. Okay. It, okay. All right. Cool. All right. This I was so much he, fun. I guys. bet someone's mad. He lost a dragon. Ooh, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Uh, one of your books also, Mar, was called The Prismatic Array. Oh. And it only had six pages in it. That alarming. <laughs> yeah, but there were several pages that were blank, like they were planning on adding more detail to it. I'll send you detail about it. Yep. Oh, so concerning. Yep. Everything you already sent me details about, I was like <laughs> hyperventilating. Because I imagine yeah. on the, the, the ship ride or whatever, you would also have time to kind of read other things. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, gang, what I read out loud was not the most concerning jo document Josh sent me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Like, hey, <laughs> Love that. Love that. Right. Can I run this by you? Can I have <laughs> the shadow demon go inside the other bag of holding and kill the flaming skull. <laughs> Is that a possibility? Uh, he feeds, Before you have he feeds on life force. Um, technically, the flaming skull's a soul. We might be able to work something out with that. Uh, You're yeah. like, hey, don't can you take, do me Don't a... take away my nuclear bomb. <laughs> You're like, hey, can you do a task for me before I evict you? Well, we're not going right. to tell him we're evicting yeah. him. Okay? No. All right. <laughs> I'm going to keep that but secret. We will pick up with season three. Three, let's next go. Next time. All right. Thank you all. I'll see you next time. All right. Good this night. was fun, guys.